the boss wouldn't like you killing a customer. You sure? That's Staley, all right. There's a kerchief tied to his bridle. We'll pick him up near the Arroyo and take him the rest of the way in. Kane, wait a minute. Those ain't customers. Frank? No. If you miss, they can make a run for it. Frank, meet Staley and get him out of sight. Don't bring him in till we get rid of those two. You know the water ain't so bad around here. Uh, the grays will do. This ain't exactly the garden spot of Texas, though. Well, as long as there's grass and water, the boss ought to be satisfied. Might even hold the herd over here and let them rest a few days. How are you? This is private range. Didn't see any signs posting it. Everybody around here knows it and keeps off. Yeah, but we're just passing through. We're scouting for a herd trailing to Abilene. Abilene's north. You're riding south. He said we were scouting. We're looking for grass and water. We're just riding back to the herd to report to the boss. Find what you want? Yeah. Anywhere up above there will be fine. Maybe you're going to tell us that this uh, whole range is private, huh? No, maybe about it. Well, maybe I don't believe you. Then I'll let the boss spell it out for you. No, Roddy. Go ahead. Save us all a lot of talk. Nah, I'd rather see if your boss can spell. before that door will. Oh, well, we just didn't want you forgetting us, that's all. When are you going to get us out of here? When do we see the boss? Right now? Come on. I don't know. I really don't know if I'm ready yet. That's it. Come on! Stop it, Jess. Did you hear me? Put that gun away. What are you doing here? Trying to keep you out of trouble, but it looks like I'm a little late. Yeah, well, we were getting pushed around a little. Figured we were due for some pushing back. We're both due now. Any time. That's enough, Jess. Get back to work. These are your men, then, Mr. Favor, I presume? I'm afraid so, Mrs. Hastings. Rowdy Yates, our ramrod. Pete Nolan, our scout. Yeah, pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Hastings. I owe you gentlemen a deep apology. Believe me, I didn't want to keep you locked up like that, but my foreman insisted on it till he could ride back to the herd and check out your story. Oh, I'm sure you can understand. Running a ranch like this alone, it's pretty difficult for a woman. Much too often, strangers try to take advantage of me, and my foreman does try to see that I'm not bothered. Uh, there's no two ways about that. He was devoted to my husband. When he died two years ago, Jess offered to stay on and help me. I hope you'll forgive him. Oh, yeah. Well, no harm done at all. Please feel free to use my range, Mr. Faber. As a matter of fact, if you'll cut further east about three miles, you'll find much better graze on the flats in the valley. Oh, no, no, no. Flats will be fine. Thank you. I insist. You'd be doing me a favor. The valley's terribly overgrown. Your cattle will clear it out for me. Oh, yeah. They'll do that all right. Well, thank you, Mrs. Hastings. It's been very kind of you. Not at all. It's nice to have met you. Same here. Hey, what about our guns? Uh... Oh, uh, turned over to me. Come on.
bury your brains letting Staley in when the drovers are still here. Frank couldn't keep him holed up. He was getting spooky. Anyway, he's an itchy gun. Oh, is he? Now, wait a minute. Why are you letting them drovers on the range? There are over 20 men out there. Every one of them a jump at a chance for that reward money. You shouldn't have let them in. It would have been better to have them camp on the flats. It would have been better to keep them off altogether. Jess, when are you going to learn that to fight trouble makes it bigger? To ride with it makes it disappear completely. Can you prove you're Tom Staley? My references. Five thousand dollars. You're a valuable man, Mr. Staley. Well, the Bankers Association thinks I'm pretty valuable. So do I. That'll be five hundred dollars for the first week. Five hundred? And a hundred a day thereafter. The longer you stay here, the more dangerous it is for me. But for what? This dirty little hideout? For excellent accommodations. And for the work of getting you in and out of the territory, and for the day and night protection of my men. Five hundred dollars or start riding alone. All right. Jess will take care of you. You know, for that kind of money, seems like I ought to get a little personal service. That's the only personal service you'll get from me, Mr. Staley. What's wrong, boss? The fellow ought to have his brains removed riding a horse like that. He's doing more hanging on than riding. Yeah, but not for long. Take it easy, you hurt yourself. Now stay away from me. Keep away. Now look, we're just trying to help you out, mister. No, now leave me alone. Please, I didn't mean any harm. I was just trying to do my job. I don't know what you're talking about. We just saw you take a spill and come over to find out if you hurt yourself. Oh. Sorry, I... I thought that you were... It's those men. They're the ones who were chasing me. Oh, yeah. That's that foreman, Kane. Yeah, he sure gets around, don't he? Oh, please. Let me take your horse. I've got to get away from you. Oh, take it easy. Nobody's going to hurt you. Thanks, favor. We'll take him now. Oh, uh, no. Hey, mind telling me what this is all about? I don't see that's any concern of yours. True, true. But uh, must be something mighty interesting, considering he half killed himself trying to get away. What'd you do, steal something? He was trespassing. Mighty persnickety about trespassing, ain't you? I've got my orders. The boss don't like strangers. I was only trying to do my job. And what's that? I'm a government census taker. Census taker? That's right. I'm supposed to find out how many people live in this territory and what they all do. That's the only reason I went near his ranch. He wouldn't listen to me, accuse me of spying. Well, that sounds reasonable enough to me. Not to me. You gonna turn him over? Not if he ain't done nothing wrong. I'll decide that. I'll tell you what, you've got a legitimate complaint against him. Uh, we could go in and turn him over to the sheriff, huh? The boss did you a favor letting you use this range. You've got a funny way of showing your appreciation. Well, I'll settle that with her personal. Guess you got no reason to hang around, have you, Kane? I guess you'll be all right now, Mr. Uh... Uh, Gedwell, Martin Gedwell. Hi, my name's Favor, Gil Favor. This is Rowdy H. Pete Nolan. I'm happy to know you, gentlemen, and uh, believe me, I'm most grateful. I only hope I haven't caused you any trouble. Oh, that kind of trouble we like. I'm afraid your horse is long gone, but uh, we can lend you one from our string. You just leave it in town, we'll pick it up tomorrow morning. Oh, you'll be going into Paso Grande yourself? Yes, some of us. Well, if it wouldn't be too much trouble, could I wait and go with you? 
Yeah, sure. I'd appreciate the company. Of course. Huh? Come on, you can ride with me. Oh, thank you. I'll get my hat. <laughs> As far as the goal, Mr. Gidwell. Got to get my supplies here. This is fine, thank you. Well, don't look like you're going to have any trouble at all tallying this town. I don't look like enough people to make a good crowd. I couldn't care less. I'm finished. What do you mean, finished? You mean you counted them already? No, I'm quitting. When I took this job, I didn't agree to being shot at and chased all over the country. Well, you can't just leave a whole town out. As far as I'm concerned, the whole state can be left out. Well, goodbye. Thanks again for your trouble. You know something? He's going to mess things up to a fairly well. Mess what up? Well, the census. He's quitting. He isn't going to count the folks in this town. Be just the same as if they weren't even born. Yeah, well, that ain't going to bother them none. Well, it is so. It's going to throw everything off. Well, there won't be enough representatives in Congress, and the government will be all lopsided. Oh, they'll vote in some kind of law and take care of that wish. We'll be over in the barbershop if you need us for anything. Not me. I'll be in a saloon. Yeah, but... We'll see you later. <sighs> Fine bunch of citizens they are. Well, I got to go pick up the mail. I think I'll get some lunch. I got a real hankering for some good restaurant food. No offense, Wish. <laughs> Sir, but I just couldn't do it. You couldn't find out anything? Whether there were any other buildings on the ranch? Uh, how many men they had? Oh, a whole army, as far as I'm concerned. They all came after me. Sure, they would have killed me if those drovers hadn't interceded. Drovers? Yeah, some men with a bunch of cows. Thieves, please. Hmm? Oh, whenever. They saved my life. They let me spend the night with them and brought me into Paso Grande this morning. <laughs> Very interesting group of men, too. Amusing. Especially that cook. <laughs> Can you imagine a man with the name of Wishbone? <laughs> no. Wishbone? Yeah. Was the trail boss Gil Favor? Did you meet Rowdy Yates, Pete Nolan? Ah, yeah, yes, I believe those were some of the names. Well, what do you know? In any event, sir, I'm sure you understand why I just can't continue. I'm not suited for this kind of work. Yeah, yeah, sure, don't. You just forget it. Here. Here's your uh, last week's pay. Oh, but I uh, can't accept it. I didn't get you the information you wanted. Believe me, the information you did get is worth twice that money. like that should stay hidden. <laughs> Clay, Clay Forrester. How are you, Roddy? What are you doing? Well, I'll be... Hey, hey Pete! Hey, look who's here. Oh, well, it's a bad penny. <laughs> Glad to see you too, Pete. Hey, uh, how come you're out pushing the herd? Oh, Mr. Faber, he gave us a day off, so we're just messing around town. I thought you went west somewhere. Will you please sit down? Mm -hmm. oh. oh, I was heading west, but then I, uh, I got this job and, uh... Wait a minute. Look at the... Roddy, you won't believe it. Look at 
What? You, a lawman? Will you sit down and stay put? No. Oh. It's like trying to shave a man on horseback. <laughs> well, I got this uh, job with the government and they made me a marshal to give me some authority. Authority to do what? Well, it's pretty important work. Collecting information and things like that. Yeah, well, what kind of information? Well, uh, I'm taking the census. Uh, you mean like that fella Gidwell? Yeah, he works for me. At least he did. Uh, I'm gonna have to handle this territory by myself now. You mean you're a nose counter? Oh, well, Mr. Favor, here's about this. Hey, Roddy, Pete, I found 23 people. <laughs> well, what hole did you climb out of? How are you, Wishbone? I never thought I'd see you again, except dangling from a rope. How'd you manage? Well, same as usual. Oh, my slippery elm tongue ears. <laughs> oh, but you gotta be careful now, Wish. I mean, uh, check the badge there. You're talking to a marshal. Marshal? Yeah, he's just the fellow you want to see about those 23 people you counted. He's boss census taker around here. <laughs> you? <laughs> Look, if you boys want to have a meeting, we got a nice town hall down the street. <laughs> Come on, tell us how you go about it. What do you do when you count up to ten? Take off your shoes and socks? Yeah, how about little kids? Do they count for a half or a whole? Why don't you two find out for yourselves? Huh? Yeah, I'll give you jobs. Right now, all three of you. Uh, us be census takers? That's right, there's nothing to it. I give each a certain territory, and then you ask everybody the same questions. Nothing could be easier. Ah, uh, go on. Oh, why not? The job pays hard cash. Since when do you have any objections to that? Oh, I got better things to do. Yeah, I know you're talking about it. Mr. Favor wouldn't let us do a thing like that. Now you leave Favor to me. Did he come in town with you? Yeah. Probably at the restaurant. All right, you meet me there in about half an hour. Your job's will be waiting for you. <laughs> For him, I'm gonna pin my money to my long johns. Nope. Absolutely not, Clay. My men work for me, nobody else. They work full time. I'm in a jam if I don't get help. My orders are to finish up this territory by tomorrow, and I can't do it alone. Sorry. That's too bad. Boys are really counting on that extra money. Well, let's forget it. Tell me, how's the uh, herd doing? All right, so far. How many head you got by now? Hmm, a little over 3,000, I figure. Oh, don't you know exactly? <laughs> no, what trail boss doesn't know exactly. Lose a few head one day, pick up a few uh, strays the next. Impossible to keep exact count. Uh, that's a shame. Hmm? I'm really very sorry, Favor. Sorry about what? Well, I've got to have a tally on that herd, an exact count. I thought you were supposed to be taking the census on people, not cattle. On people and their property. And this herd is your property, isn't it? <laughs> Expect me to count them now? No, no, that's my job. I've got to do it personally, but uh, I may be a little slow working alone, you know. But I'll be finished up by weekend. Well, you can. We're pulling out tomorrow. I'm sorry, Favor. Not until I get an exact count. It's the law. And uh, don't try to stop me. I've got all the authority that goes with this star. Oh, blackmail, huh? Oh, now, where would you ever get an idea like that? <laughs> of course, if I could get the help I need, say two or three men, I, I could tally that herd tomorrow. Rules don't change for anyone. None of the men hold down two jobs. That's what I like about you, Favor. You stick to your principles. Mm -hmm. I'll be out to tally the herd as soon as I finish up here in town. Ought to take me, um, oh, a day or so. No, oh, I mean, we run into, um, Rowdy, Pete, Bushbone. You tell them they're fired. Fire? Well, yeah, they can sign back on once they get the herd tallied. Well, that won't take long, I promise you. I figured. You live here alone, Miss Blake. Uh, don't forget Johnny. Oh, you didn't say anything about anybody else. Where is he? Uh, Johnny? You! Johnny! Johnny Blake. Now, come on, Mr. Frazier. You gotta answer these questions. It's the law. Government wants to know. Why? Come on, will you please give me your first name? I already got my last, ain't that enough? No, it ain't. Albert. This here is your occupation. 
Now you own the stable. Yeah. H. The stable or me? You, of course. Oh, you want to draft me again, huh? Look. How old are you, Mr. Frazier? Forty-five. Thank you very much, Mr. Frazier. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You sure that's all? You know something? The government's sure full of busybodies. L-O-P-E-Z. Lopez. Manuel. Conchita. Now, age? Sí. El señor quiere saber cuántos años tenemos. ¿Quién? ¿Tú o yo? No. ¿Es mí? Yo. ¿Cuántos años tengo? 41 años. ¿Yo? De tonto, no sabes que tienes 41 años. Ya estamos casados por 20. 41. ¿Y tu esposa? ¿Cuántos años tienes tú? 38. No digas que tengo 38. ¿Qué le importa al señor? No te mato si dices que tengo 38. Solo dile que tengo 21 años. Eh, 21. ¿Y tu ocupación? Eh, ¿Qué clase de trabajo hago yo? ¿Tú? ¿Trabajo? Nada. No trabaja. ¿Cómo te apoyas a ti? ¿Cómo mantenemos la familia? ¿Eh? ¿Cómo mantenemos la familia? Si no era por mí, que soy la bandera cada día, no comería más nada la familia entera. She washed the clothes. And how many children, if any? Tenemos a Carmencita, Ricardito, ahí de Irena, Juanito. ¿Cuántos hijos tenemos? 14 niños. Oh, 13. 14, te digo 14. No, 13, niña. Yo soy el papá y yo soy la mamá. Come on, make up your minds, will you? Uh, please, señor, please. We have just lost a little child. Y, y Sarita, sí. y Lupita, y Miguelito. ¿A qué trata? ¿Qué se olvidó Miguelito? <laughs> Excuse me, I forgot uh, Miguelito. 14. How long have you lived here? We don't live here. We live in Mexico. You see, we have come here to visit my brother. You wish to speak to him? He's thinking it's yes, I call him. There is no other question you want to ask, senor? Because we want to help you. Well, good work, boys. Kept at it, you'd make fine sense of stickers. <laughs> no, no thanks. After this work, uh, droving's a real pleasure. We get the money now? Yeah, as soon as the census is complete. Well, it is, eh? We went everywhere you told us to. Well, there's one ranch left. It's a big one. All of us will have to go. The Hastings Ranch. Hastings? There, you know. Yeah. Well, that's where the herd's laying over. But why we all have to go? Oh, uh, well, a ranch that size, you've got to take an industrial survey, too. Cattle, property, it's, uh, it's a lot more complicated. Yeah, and they got a foreman out there who don't take kindly to strangers. Yeah, like Gidwell, for instance. Oh, so that's it. He wants us to pack guns for him. Oh, now, wait a minute. Would I ask you to risk your lives on a job like this? Yeah, you sure would. <laughs> Only we're not gonna. Well, how can you quit on me now? Well, it's the easiest thing in the world, Clay. You just pay up. Well, I, I don't have the money right now. What do you mean you don't have the money right now? I mean, I don't carry a whole payroll with me. I knew it! I knew we'd been suckered! Uh, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. All I have to do is to wire El Paso, and they'll send a bank order in a couple of hours. Look, Clay, if this is a trick... Honestly? All right. Two hours. After that, we're going to take it out of your hide. Listen, uh, as long as you have nothing else to do... Well, I have. Like figuring out what I'm going to do to you if you don't come up with that money. Two hours. You better start looking for the telegraph office, you know. Mr. Forrester? The 
sheriff told me I'd find you here. You're the marshal in charge of taking the census in this territory? Yes, ma'am, I am. Well, I'm Martha Hastings. I came to offer my apologies. I understand that one of your men was rather badly treated yesterday. I hope there won't be any trouble. Well, taking the census is required by law, ma'am. If uh, one doesn't cooperate... Uh... Ah, but I want to. That's why I'm here. I'd be more than glad to give you any information you need. Well, that's very gracious of you, ma'am, but uh, we can't do it here. I'll have to come out to your ranch myself. Really? I don't see why. Well, it's a matter of verification, ma'am. Oh, not that I wouldn't take your word, Mrs. Hastings, but, uh, well, uh, orders are orders. Of course. Why don't you come with me right now? I'll show you around myself. Oh, uh, that wouldn't be necessary. Ah, but I insist. It's the only way I can possibly make up for that shabby way your man was treated. All right. You give me one moment to uh, get my horse. Yes. Yeah. Ain't that Mrs. Hastings? Yeah. What's Clay doing? He going with her? He's trying to beat us out of our money. Look, you two better go on back to the herd. I'll stay here and keep an eye on him. On him or on her? I'm just trying to make sure we get our money. Oh, yeah. All right, Miss Hastings. Lead the way. Hey, Clay, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, Rowdy, well, what do you want? Yeah, I was just wondering if... It... Oh. Hello, Miss Hastings. I, I didn't hardly recognize you sitting there. How are you, Mr. Yates? Oh, good, good. So you're going to be around town for a while? If you are, I'd sure be pleased to... Uh, Rowdy, huh? uh, Mrs. Hastings and I have some business. Uh, we're in a hurry. Oh, yeah, well, I, you know, I was thinking, Clay, it isn't fair of me to leave you in the lurch like this. I, I'll stay with you till the job's finished. Aren't you working for Mr. Favor anymore? Oh, yeah, yeah, I just took the day off to help out my old friend Clay here. Right, Clay? That's right. going very well. We didn't have enough money to pay the taxes. The collector came out with a foreclosure notice. My husband got into an argument with him. It was a fight. He was shot. What a shame. It's a wonder you were able to keep hold of the property. I thought I had to, for his sake. I managed to find a way to raise the money. I've done pretty well. It must have been difficult sometimes, though. It still is occasionally. This is his land, and I won't give it up. Besides, it'd be like selling the happiest years of my life. Well, there must have been very few, since there are so many good years ahead of you. Mr. Forrester, I begin to understand why you were made a census taker. You could charm information out of a stone. Unfortunately, well, I'm not questioning one right now. Don't you think we should get on with your work? Well, I'm just about finished. Uh, all I have to do is verify the boundaries of your property. No sooner said than done. Whoa! The western line runs north over those hills, and down that ridge to the south and east. I see. Hey, I hate to interrupt, Clay. Uh, oh, uh, uh, yeah. No, that's all right, Roddy. What is it? They don't look too friendly out there. Don't worry, that's just my foreman and some of the hands. I'd be less worried if it was the James boys. You all right, Mrs. Hastings? This is Marshal Forrester. He's taking the census. I've been showing him around. But uh, I won't take any more of your time, ma'am. Thank you for your trouble and uh, your courtesy. Oh, well, you're very welcome. Please feel free to visit the ranch anytime. I'll make a point of it. Good day, Miss Hastings. Gentlemen. You never gave us the high sign. Wasn't any need to. Forrest is quite satisfied. He won't bother us again. I still don't like the idea of bringing him out here. 
He's a federal marshal, Jess. You don't keep people like that off the property without causing trouble. You don't invite them to snoop around, either. Oh, yes, you do. If you want to make sure that they only see what you want them to. Yes! think, Rowdy? I think I had myself a long ride for nothing. Well, you asked to come along. Yeah, I suppose I did. Now, uh, seriously, how does this place stack up to you? Just another ranch. Only a couple of hundred head of cattle? How does she make it pay? I don't know, unless she keeps the rest of her bees down the flats. Flats? Yeah, that's a couple of miles past where we stopped just now. But, uh, she said that her boundaries ended there. Yeah, she did, but uh, not Kane. He was uh, he stopped me and Pete there yesterday. Oh. Come to think of it, there wasn't any beeves there then either. And that's where it is. Where what is? Look, stop stalling, Clay. When do we get our money? You really ain't such a bad fella. It's just that you gotta quit this running around in circles uh, type stuff and, and, and the census taking and get yourself a good, decent job. I'll do that someday. Here, have another drink. Oh, no, I'll get drunk. Oh, I'll just a couple of drinks. Oh, come on. Uh, well, You're probably just tired. Yes, Why don't you uh, stretch out a bit? Hey, that's a real good idea. Now, look, what I'm telling you is that, see, Mr. Favor, he offered you this job and all you gotta do is take it. Yeah, I'm sure the offer is still open. That's good to know. Yeah, you could do a lot worse than working for the Gill Favor outfit. Good boss, good crew. Excellent ramrod. Good. Oh, God. Here we go. Oh, I'm down to the telegraph office. See if that money order's in yet. Now, you just stay put. You don't move till I come back, you hear? Mm, uh, never happened. Senor boss, Senor Forrester just wrote in. It better be with the money he owes us. Evening, Clay. You uh, come to do the tally tonight? <clears throat> no, as a matter of fact, I think we can forget about it. Let's be between friends. I'll take your word for it. What you mean is uh, you don't need Rowdy and Wishbone and Pete anymore, huh? No, as a matter of fact, I don't. They're... Uh, they finished up this afternoon. Then where's our money? Well, I gave it to Rowdy. Ask him. Well, he's not here yet. Oh, well, he left town a couple of hours ago. Then he should have been back by now. Well, he said he was headed right back, unless, uh... Unless what? Well, he was pretty riled up about that foreman out at the Hastings Ranch. Uh, said he was fed up with the way Kane was pushing him around. Um, he might have... Uh, no, he wouldn't be that loco. He might have what? Well, he talked mighty big about settling with Kane once and for all. Tried to cool him off, but you know that temper of his. And you think he went to the Hastings Ranch? Well, you said he wasn't here. Where else would he go? I don't know, but I think you're pulling another one of your fast ones. What? But when you really stop to think about it, it don't make much sense that you'd go to all the trouble of blackmailing me just to have them help you count the census. Well, I thought I might need protection. Since when does a census taker need protection? Or is this just another one of your little angles? Well, I... I... Look! We've put up with you in your little games because we like you. But if anything has happened to Rob... All right, all right, take it easy. I'll give it to you straight. This is the little personal angle. Outlaws. Yeah, on the Hastings Ranch. In a hideout near the flats, and I think I have a pretty good idea where they are now. 
You told Mrs. Hastings about this? Told her. She's the one who set it up for them and for anybody else who'll pay her price. What kind of a fairy tale is that? I'm giving it to you straight. A friend of mine told me about it a couple of months ago. Former tenant, you might say. He tipped me off in case I might need to hole up. So you fooled us into doing your dirty work. I couldn't do it alone, Wishbone. I would have given you your cut. Well, Rowdy isn't getting any healthier. You figure he's out at the Hastings Ranch. He was mad enough to. All right. Wishbone, get Quentz and Scarlet, some of the other men. All right, but when we get back, you better find some place to hide. Like maybe China. Anything happens to Rowdy, even that won't be far enough, boy. So far, so good. Kane's patrol must have missed us in the dark. Never looked for us this far in. Yeah, but we're running out of flats. Huh. They must be guarding the hideout. Probably right behind it, down the road. It'll be a tough place to take them, though. They could spot us before we get near enough. Uh, you let them spot me first. I'll keep them busy. All right. Pete, Wishbone, Scarlet, Quince, come with me. The rest of you stay here. Right there. Well, you might as well shoot a man as a scare him after death. What are you doing here? Just looking around. This is all private rain. I know, but I'm the census taker. Didn't Mrs. Hastings tell you about me? She sure did. There's a house back there, all right. That's where they've got Rowdy. Pete? Clay and I are going in. You stay here with the rest. Why don't we all go in? Still too much chance of being spotted. We gotta find Rowdy before the shooting starts. But there aren't any guards left. I think we gotta rush them. You've been doing too much thinking for one night. Let's go. It's a clear shot from here to that door. We could be inside before they knew what hit them. Nothing doing. We find Rowdy first. But, uh, maybe Rowdy isn't even here. You said he would be. Well, uh, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe, uh, maybe he's back at the ranch house. Maybe this is all just another trick. We're wasting time, Favor. Let's get in there and nail them. That's all you're concerned about, ain't it? Just to pick them up and then collect that reward and let Rowdy go hang. No, Rowdy's nowhere around. I... What? I couldn't stick his neck out like this. I left him at the hotel. But I needed your help to back my play here. Oh, so help me, Clay. Oh, come on, Favor. There's $15,000 in there. I don't want any part of it. And when we're out of here, believe me, I'm going to break I'm your I'm sorry, back. but we're heading in different directions. Wait. Sit quiet. Keep your hands flat on the table. That's right. Oh, a real good look at you. I've never seen $15,000 on a hook before. Now, what's Mr. Yates worth? At least as much, I should think. Put the gun down. Believe me, the idea of shooting a woman doesn't bother me a bit. Perhaps not, but I think the idea of losing his friend would bother Mr. Favor a good deal. We seem to be at a stalemate. Not as far as I'm concerned. Favor and his men are outside, you don't stand a chance. Neither does Mr. Yates. How'd you get him? My foreman thought it would be a good idea to question him and find out what you were really doing. It seems that you've given us your answer personally. All I have to do is walk outside and a dozen guns will rip this place apart. You got an answer for that, Mrs. Hastings? Maybe you'll walk outside, but Mr. Yates will be carried out. You're bluffing. So are you. 
It's a big pot, Mr. Forrester. Fifteen thousand dollars against a man's life. Now who's going to win? What's going on? Roddy ain't here. Clay pulled another one of his angles. He's just trying to get us to help him round up those outlaws. I knew it. I knew I spelled a rat. Did he go in there alone? Hmm. We're wasting time, Mr. Forrester. All right, I'll make a deal with you. Good. Two of them for Rowdy. All of them. All of them? With an hour's head start. Let them through. What's going on? Never mind. Just let them through. Whatever you say. Pete, get back and tell the man. Don't you think he's pulling now? All right, it's clear. Get out of here and get as far away as you can. Well, since we have to wait anyway, shall we sit down and be comfortable? Get Rowdy out here. All right, Jess, bring him out. You sure took your time getting that money. I'm sorry, Rowdy. Yeah, it's all right. Fifteen thousand's a big day's wages. They're on their way. One hour, remember. All right, Jess, you can put the gun away now. Oh, I'm sorry you're not going to collect that bounty money, but really being a census taker is a much more respectable profession. So is being a lady rancher. After living here, you're going to find it a little cramped in prison. Ah, oh, but the evidence is gone. So it's only your word against mine, and I'm highly respected in the community. Play. No trouble, Mr. Forrester. I warn you. Hello, there. Juice said... A little angle I didn't figure on, Wishbone. So help me, Clay. Lay off of him, boss. He's just been kind of wiped out. <laughs> They've been bushwhacked. You lied. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hastings. I prefer you try the accommodations at the prison. Watch it. They may be coming back. In your favor. Pete, Wishbone, you are here. It's Jesus. Jesus, what are you doing here? I bring the sheriff. The sheriff? Everybody all right? Yeah, sure. But, but what about those men? Did you get them? Cold. Two dead, the other surrendered. Your drover here told me that you'd gone after the outlaws. So I just got a posse and they run right into us. But how did you know they were in the flats? Senor Wishbone and Senor Pete tell me, just before you leave the camp. I figured we needed a real sheriff more than any nose-counting federal marshal. Yeah, there's almost $15,000 reward on those three fellas. That's more money than I made in my whole life. And you know something? I'm going to share it with you, young fella, for helping me get them. <laughs> oh, but, uh, Senor Wishbone and Senor Pete, they have two. Ah, then they deserve a share. <laughs>
sacks of flour and five pounds of sugar and a pound of tobacco. We got everything for a change. Well? Mr. Wishbone, I ain't never been a man of the world. You think this hat might help? It isn't your hat needs changing, it's your head. Stagecoach in yet? I'm meeting a friend. Just in time, stranger. Coach stops here every afternoon at four. Better get the coffee on the fire, Jesse. You stay put. I'll shoot the first one that makes a move. You put your hands down. You act like nothing was wrong. You try to warn them, you'll all be dead. I think I winged one of them. You better ride into Cottonwood and tell the sheriff fast. You'll be wanting to join the posse, won't you? Sorry, friend, no time. No time, mister, that was a holdup. There's five outlaws to hunt down, and each one went off in a different direction. And we got 3,000 head of beeves to ride herd on. Now, that takes more men than 50 outlaws. Come on, Mushy, get the pistols and the sacks. Coffee, Mr. Scarlet? Too tired to swallow, Mushy. Coffee, Mr. Quinn? Yeah, thanks, Mushy. Well, I figure it's 16 uh, miles. Oh, you better be right. Is there something strange? Like what? Listen. Colonel Reed. Uh, Colonel Reed. Sergeant Decker re reporting. Colonel. Colonel Reed? <laughs> Sergeant Decker wishes to report that the mission is accomplished. Yeah, this is one of those stagecoach robbers. I told you I got one of them. Hey, you reckon there's any money in this box? Yeah. One way to find out. Says there's a thousand dollars in every packet. Wow. Must be 50 packets in here at least. We better get it back soon. There's got to be a posse out looking for it. Uh, we do that. It's two days' ride to Cottonwood. That means anyone that was sent be gone for four days. I can't even spare one man that long. Yeah, that posse runs across one man riding along with all this money. He's likely to get the wrong idea. Well, what are we going to do then? Only thing we can do, take it with us to the next town. That's six days ahead, Pine Valley. I have to do. We'll turn it over to the sheriff there and give him a report. You mean we have to ride herd on $50,000? I mean, you are going to be riding herd on 3,000 head of beef, and that is all you got to worry about. Wishbone, you take charge of it. Rope it up good so nobody's tempted to check it out. Keep it in the wagon with you all the times. Right. Irv, Blaze, get some shovels. Spade him in. You know, the posse ain't gonna like it. They find out we got the money that they spent all this time looking for. Word about the posse. It's him and the people he was supposed to meet. 
Wishbone said there was some more with him. It figures they expect to rendezvous somewhere around here. Yeah, when he don't show up, they're gonna come looking for him. For $50,000, I guess they would. <laughs> Ah, oh, you ain't started the ball yet. Still the cool of the morning. I tell you, Pete, I could have had me a gentleman's job tending bar down home. I don't know why I signed up on this drive again for anyway. Oh, no, that's easy. It's light work, short hours, good pay. Beef is gonna turn to dust if we don't get to water soon. Where's the next water hole? Salt Flat Springs. It'll be a couple of days. Two days? Were you leading us by way of the Sahara? Look, I ain't no Moses. I can't touch one of these rocks and make water spurt out of it. Maybe if you could, you might be of some use. Who put the burr under his saddle? Sometimes I wonder why I joined up with this blasted drive. Oh, that's easy. Light work, short hours, and good pay. <laughs> Charming, if you're done beautifying yourself, I'll show you about gathering firewood. Yes, sir. Yes. Well, what are you grinning about? Nothing, Rowdy. Nothing. Just dreaming. Ah, well, it must be some dream. Well, I'm in this rainstorm, see? Only it ain't raining rain. It's raining greenbacks. And they're coming down faster than I can catch them. Well, what do you do with these greenbacks after you get them? <laughs> well, I ain't dreamed that far yet, Rowdy. Rowdy, if all that money was yours, what would you do with it? Ah, well, I don't know. Live high, wide, and wild for a while, I suppose. Maybe even travel. <laughs> what about you, Jesus? Oh, that's easy. In the village where I come from, there is a small church with a high bell tower. But there is no bell in the tower. There was no money for a bell. Bells? Well, you can buy all the bells you want, but I know what I'd do. Well, I'd buy me the biggest, fanciest saloon in town, and I'd hire me 12 of the prettiest gals you ever saw. And I'd dress them up in silks and spangles. Jim, you like a partner in that saloon? Not necessarily. <laughs> you all seem mighty pleased with yourselves. What would you do, Mr. Favor? Well, if you had the $50,000. Well, yeah. That. Well, since it ain't mine, I ain't even thinking of spending one red cent of it. A couple of fellas riding in the cab. They alone? As far as I can tell. Who's in charge here? That'd be me. Name's Favor, trail boss here. Glad to meet you, Mr. Favor. I'm the deputy sheriff of Carson County. Uh, Jim Norton here and I are with a posse that's looking for five outlaws that held up a stagecoach. Yeah, well, I think you've come to the right place, and I'm glad to see you. But just what do you know about him? Well, I think we might have some of what you're looking for. Isn't your name McKeever? Lieutenant McKeever? Rowdy Yates. Ah, oh, good to see you. <laughs> this man was my commanding officer for over a year at Fort Yuma. Good soldier, too. Well, now, this sure is a stroke of luck. Running into a, an old comrade in arms like Rowdy and maybe catching up with the men we've been hunting. Uh, you did say you'd seen him, Mr. Favor. Well, one of them came into camp last night, but he keeled over dead from a bullet wound. Had a big box of money with him, though. Well, you sure do have what we're looking for. Rowdy, I wish I had time to stick around and jaw with you for a while, but uh, the posse's waiting for us, and we got the rest of those outlaws to find. So, with your permission, Mr. Favor, I'll relieve you of that money box, and we'll be on our way. Yeah, sure. Quince, pick up the money box from Wish. Here! Yeah. 
Just what are you doing in the wagon? Mr. Favor wants the money box. Well, he put me in charge of that box. If he wants it, I'll take it to him. Troubles are over, Wish. You can turn your box over to the sheriff here. Oh, that's good news. I'm sure glad to get rid of it. Him? Well, he's one of the outlaws. So is he. First man that makes a move, the trail boss gets it. Keep your gun on him, Norton. All right, mister, I'll take that box. Mr. Favor. If you're smart, you'll give me that box and let me ride out of here. Get something to tie him up with. Don't you understand? I've got friends out there. And when Norton tells them what happened to me, they're gonna come after me in that money. And they'll do whatever they have to to get me back. There was only five of you pulled that job, and I got one of them. Now we got you. That only leaves three against all of us. There was only five that you saw. There's twice that number waiting at the rendezvous. I want a guard on Big Mouth all the time. Lenny, you'll take the first watch. They'll come after me, Mr. Favor. And if they have to kill to get me back, they'll kill. Well, isn't it part of a trail boss's job to keep his men alive? Or maybe you don't care what happens to your men. What's so funny? You wouldn't understand. Well, try us. Well, it is funny. All of you risking your lives for money that wasn't even stolen. That's a lie. Mushy and I saw you take the money off that stagecoach with our very own eyes. Oh, sure, we took it. But we didn't steal it. We were reclaiming what was rightfully ours. My, oh, my. Ain't you got the slick tongue, though? You can twist just about anything around to your way of thinking, can't you? I'm telling the truth, Mr. Favor. That money was stolen, all right. Not by us, from us. In a way, some of it belongs to you, too, you and your men. Just how in the ever-loving do you figure that? Oh, you heard Rowdy say I was an officer with the Rebs. How many of you here served to the South? I did. Most of us. That's what I thought, most of you. That means you do have a claim to that money. Every man in the South has a claim to it. Were well, you trying to say we got a legal claim to that money? That's just what I'm saying. Can you prove that? Sure, I can prove it. Any of you here ever hear of Reed's Folly? Yeah, I was in the outfit. Ran short of supplies and ammunition. Reed was trying to raise money to replace it. He raised over $50,000. But before we got a chance to use it, the war ended. So we hid it away. We figured we'd need it when the war started up again. Except the war ain't starting up again. Well, the feds knew about that money, too. They'd been looking for it. Last month, they found it, confiscated it for the U.S. government. But that money doesn't belong to the U.S. government. Now, I got the authority to open that box and give every man jack of you $100. You just let me leave here with the rest. $100? More than I make in three months on this drive. It's more than you'd make in ten years in prison, which is what you'd get if you took any part of that money. But Mr. Favor was raised for the South, and where the South? After considering all sides of the argument very carefully, here's how it is. No matter how you slice it, that money is stole. So that's the end of it. I don't want to hear no more about it. You heard the big boss. He'd rather see you die than share in money that's rightfully yours. Maybe you like working for a man like that. I sure wouldn't want him for my boss.
Sure was a good breakfast, Wishbone. I wish you'd been our mess chief at Fort Yuma. Yeah, well, if that's where you served, I'm sure glad I didn't. Are you thinking about your share of that money, Quince? Do you want your hundred dollars? You bet your bottom dollar I want it. That chance I've got of getting it. Find them strays? Yeah, I found them. Four of them. That is, if you got any use for slaughtered steers. They hadn't even had the guts to leave this note. Oh, I can tell you what that note says. It says this time they just killed beeves. But unless you let me and that money go, the next time they'll be killing men. Do I read it right? You read it right. Well, that note's from Colonel Reed, and Colonel Reed always means what he says. Now, why don't you be smart and do what he wants? One extra lookout's posted point, flank, and drag. Yes, sir, man, you've sure got a stubborn trail, boss. He doesn't take money that's rightfully his. He doesn't even care if his men get killed. Let's go. Say nothing. You don't need to worry for a while, Mr. Favor. They made their point. Now they'll give you time to come to your senses and let me and that money go. Of course, if you don't, there'll be more trouble waiting around the next bend and every other bend. They killed one of my men, but didn't deserve it. to see your men die. But of course, you made the choice. And there'll be more of you dying unless he lets me go. The choice is still his. No, it ain't. The choice is ours. I didn't sign on to get killed, Mr. Favor. If you don't let him go, I'm pulling out. Pay him off, Roddy. I want all the money I'm entitled to, Mr. Favor. Meaning? Meaning my hundred dollars from that box. You get the money you got coming to you, and that's all. Now get out. My share, Mr. Favor, and now. Pay him off, Roddy. Let him have his gun back. He may need it to scare rabbits. Pete. The 
better get the extra tarp on that wagon. Yeah, I'll take care of it. I suppose you got more troubles for me. Well, just a little. That water, we used most of it for the fire. We're about down to nothing. Oh, we'll be at Salt Flat Springs tomorrow. There's plenty of water there. There better be. You're a brave man, Mr. Favor, and a stubborn one. And a smart general knows when to surrender. I ain't no general. Keep out of my way. Shut up. I'll uh, take over the water. All right. Uh, I'd drink a whole lot easier if I weren't wearing these. Well, I can't let you loose, Lieutenant. Sorry, it's the favor's orders. You always were good at taking orders. You were the best sergeant I ever had. What happened anyway? What do you mean? I mean, what happened to make you turn outlaw? Well, I'm no outlaw, Rowdy. I was telling the truth about that money. You're trying to tell me this is the only job you ever pull? No, I mean that when we do pull a job, we do it for a cause we believe in. Who's we? Some of the old outfit. Others who think as we do. How'd you get started? I was tired of drifting. You remember how it was in the Army? It was a good life. We fought hard. There was purpose and meaning to what we were doing. Wars don't go on forever. No, they don't. And suddenly I was out of uniform, washed up. You could have gotten yourself a job. <laughs> Doing what? Cleaning saloons? Pitching hay? Being a stable boy? <laughs> All I'd ever known was the army. There was no more army. Well, you could have gotten something better than being an outlaw. I did find something better. I ran into Colonel Reed. You know, when I, uh... When I served under you, you used to talk a lot about honor. Where's the honor in what you're doing now? Honor means different things to different men, Rowdy. I believe in what I'm doing. Doesn't it bother you a bit that the rest of us are making out all right out of uniform? Or do you need a war to feel like a man? I'll take over now, Rowdy. You think about it, Lieutenant. I don't, uh, I don't see any honor in being a renegade. Flat Springs. Swallows of that stuff, and we'd all be wretched. Well, I could have told you it'd be poison, Mr. Favor. You see, Colonel Reed knew about this waterhole, too. You ready to talk business yet? Beat, how far to next water? About uh, three days to Cactus Creek. One thing about it, they can't poison that whole creek. Quarter of a canteen for each man, each day. Not a drop more. And for him, not a drop. He does that water, he'll probably die of thirst. His friend should have thought of that when they poisoned the water hole. All right, let's get going.
I shouldn't do this, senor. Two swallows, no more. You're a fool, Jesus. You should never show quarter to the enemy. Am I really your enemy, senor? made camp. Too much heat and no water. Figured he should stretch out. I'll see you later, Scarlett. Scarlett tells me you're beat. Hmm? Well, I... I'm not planning to die, if that's what you're waiting for. Here, have some of that. The morale in this outfit's... Low, Rowdy, you drove us a weak men. Yeah, what makes you say that? Just a favor. Gave an order, no water for me. You're the second man today who's disobeyed it. Is that right? Well, if Colonel Reed gave an order, I suppose no one would disobey it, huh? You bet they wouldn't. They are soldiers. Well, we're not soldiers, Lieutenant. We don't like killing, even if it's an enemy. Maybe that's weakness, and maybe it's strength. I suppose you'd understand that, though. What's your reason for disobeying orders, Rowdy? You were a good officer once. Maybe I owe it to you. What are you doing here? Checking on the prisoner, that's all. Hey, checking needs to be done, I'll do it. Out. You come to surrender, Mr. Favor? Yeah, don't guzzle it. Why? Well, if... I'm going to turn you into the sheriff. Look better turning in a live one than a corpse. And that's your only reason? To keep me alive so I can go to jail? What else? <sighs> you were an officer yourself, Mr. Faber. Let's talk soldier to soldier. Is it any different from uh, talking man to man? <laughs> yeah, soldiers live by a different set of rules. Rules of war. You're losing this war, Mr. Favor. You're being outmaneuvered, outdeployed. Your losses are mounting every day. If you're a wise commander, you'll come to terms with the enemy before he annihilates you. Yeah, but I ain't no commander. The only war I'm fighting is to survive. That battle of survival is one more victory than all the cannons and the cavalry charges put together. So I'll take my chances on you, Colonel Reed, because he's just another man. And from what I know of him, not too much of a one at that.
Thanks, Yates. Blasting powder. Must set the fuses just before we came over that rise. Your friend, Colonel Reed, again. Why ain't that herd moving? I didn't get orders for it to be stopped. Look, if you fellas came to complain about the ice water, I'm afraid I can't help you. It ain't that, Mr. Favor. We're through. You don't say. That's right. We've had it plumb up to here. We don't aim to risk our lives anymore. Once you give him his money box and let him ride out of here. Or you can take that herd and push it. Uh-huh. Is that how you all feel? That's right. It ain't that we ain't stuck up for you, Mr. Favor, because we have. Already one man's been killed. We've been set fire on, water's been poisoned, but this, this explosion, that's the last straw. Could have killed us all. I see. So you want me to give this thief back the money he stole and let him go. Is that it? That's right. And maybe you'd like your share of that money first. Well, he did say you uh, had some of it coming, you know. Not anymore, Mr. Paver. It's blood money, you know. Well, that's nice. That's real nice. Because he's staying with us. Him and the money. If I let him go, I wouldn't be any different than he is. Then you just better pay us off, Mr. Favor. Now, wait just a minute. Look, uh, Mr. Favor's never asked you men to do anything he wouldn't do himself. What he says is true, also. You let these men get away with this, no telling who they're gonna rob or kill next time. You wouldn't want that on your little consciences now, would you? You're always bragging what great fighters you was in the war. What's the matter, are you afraid of a few renegades? Don't beg, Wish. Either they're up to staying, or they ain't. Mr. Favor, Mr. Favor. Jesus' horse came in without him. And I found that note on his saddle that says if that lieutenant don't deliver the money by noon, he'll be dead. What do you got to say now, Mr. Favor? It's what I said before. He stays with us, so does the money. But that's Jesus out there. I know it. Well, you can't leave him there to get killed. We got to turn McKeever loose. You're sure whistling another tune mighty fast, ain't you? You, how do you feel now? Well, it's different now. The only way we can get Jesus back is trade McKeever for him, and we ought to do it. Mm. When? When are you meatheads ever going to learn? Those are renegades out there you want to deal with. They got no honesty. Their word don't mean nothing. As long as each side has got a hostage, it's still a standoff, no matter what they threaten. They won't kill Jesus for fear that we'd kill McKeever. As long as we got him, he's our insurance that Jesus stays alive. We'll trade when the odds favor us. Yeah, well, I don't see it that way. No, you don't. Do you really think for one minute that if we turn McKeever and the money back, that they're going to let Jesus go? He could identify every one of them. Smartest thing in the world they could do is to kill him, and that's just what they'd do. Well, look, these men are soldiers. They're going to fight by the rules of war. They're trash. They got no rules. In any case, this is the way it stands. You can go along with the herd, and you can tuck your tail between your legs and take off. We'll stay, Roddy. Ready? You think Colonel Reed means what he said in that note? He means it. Uh, Jesus never hurt anybody in his life. I know that, Rowdy. I, I don't feel any better about this than you do. Look, there's only one way to save Jesus. Let me go with the money. Trust you? You trusted me once. Yeah, but then you were an officer and a gentleman. I still am. When I give my word, I keep it. It's a matter of honor. Honor? Uh, what about Colonel Reed? What happens if he doesn't agree with your word? Well, you forget, Rowdy. Colonel Reed's an officer and a gentleman, too. He'd respect my commitment. I swear it. You know where to find him? I know. 
That's Jesus' life. All right. All right, you can go on one condition that I go with you. Don't let it complicate it. Let me handle this alone. You gave your word, and I'm going to give you a chance to honor it. I want to make sure Jesus is all right. It's going to be that or no deal at all. Okay, let's get going. Glad to see you back, Lieutenant. Si, senor, I am fine. Lieutenant McKeever, reporting back for duty, sir. Welcome back, Lieutenant. And brought the money, I see. Yes, sir. Well, proves my strategy was successful. They were forced to surrender. Who's he? Rowdy Yates, sir. He's ramrod of that trail drive. He's the one who let me go. Well, why'd he ride back with you? I gave him my word with release. I drove it to him. Let him ride out of here. You're absolutely right, Lieutenant. The objective being to effect your release and retrieve the money by whatever means, it was your duty to tell any lie necessary to achieve that result. But I wasn't lying, sir. Mr. Yates, I'm glad you've come. You take a message back to your trail boss for me. I came here for this man, Colonel. I ain't leaving without him. Well, I'm afraid you are, Mr. Yates. We need him more than you do. You gave me your word that he'd back you up as an officer and a gentleman. That's right, sir. I did. And you did absolutely right, Lieutenant. I've told you that. Any strategy at all to outmaneuver the enemy. This is your great colonel that can do no wrong. Now, Yates, you tell your trail boss for me. If he wants to see your friend here stay alive, is to make no further effort to rescue him and give no information whatsoever to any posse he might chance to meet. In other words, forget you ever saw us. If he violates those conditions, I'll have this man executed immediately. Now you may leave, Mr. Yates. You made a promise, Lieutenant, on an old friendship. Sir, I did promise him. On my honor. There's no honor where the enemy is concerned, Lieutenant. There's only defeat or victory. Now, you've brought us a very fine victory. You should feel quite proud of yourself. Welcome back, Mr. Yates. Hope you enjoyed your trip. Sorry. You just had to go against orders, didn't you? You just had to do it your way. Oh, where's Jesus? That was the whole point of the trip, wasn't it? They wouldn't release him. Oh, you've really fixed things up, Rowdy. They got everything they want. The lieutenant, the money, and Jesus. Oh, McKeever gave me his word. And you believed him. We gotta go in there after Jesus now, Mr. Paper. No, no, no. Pete's right. Wouldn't do any good now. They got everything they want. They're not about to be there. Oh, they'll be there. What makes you think so? Well, I don't guess that lieutenant friend of yours uh, checked the box too carefully to see if all the money was there or not, huh? No, he trusted me. Well, he shouldn't have trusted me. Wasn't nothing but bags of sand in that box. Figured it'd be too tempting to somebody, so I put it someplace else a few days back. Well, that means something. Yeah, they ain't got what they want. As long as Jesus is worth $50,000 to them, they ain't gonna lay a finger on him. 
What are we gonna do now? You, you don't do nothing. You're through. You're through as Drover. You're through as Ramrod. You're through as anything. Now get out of here as quick as you can. Pete, we'll be going after Jesus. I'll pick him up. I'll take the money with me. Well, just the two of you alone going in there against all that bunch? Just me alone. Ain't how many that counts is what you got to bargain with. Uh, you still here? You're forgetting something, aren't you? What is it? Well, I'm the only one who knows where they're keeping Jesus. So you gotta take me along. Right. Let's go. further is it? Oh, about a half hour's ride that direction. All right, we'll leave the money here. Pete, you'll be staying with the money. Rowdy and I aren't back a couple of hours. You take it back with you and get the herd moving. I don't get it. You, you ain't supposed to get it. You're just supposed to be guiding. So you get guiding. Congratulate you, Mr. Yates. You completely outwitted my naive lieutenant taking the money out of that box. He didn't take it out. I did. He thought it was still in there. Who was he? Gil Favor. He's the trail boss. Well, that's more like it. One commander negotiating with another. All right, Mr. Favor. It would appear we each have something the other man wants. How do you propose we resolve it? Give us Jesus, you get the money. You haven't brought the money with you. Of course not. Where is it? About a half hour's ride from here. And how do you propose I get it? Let Jesus go with Mr. Yates and myself, and you can send two of your men along with us. They'll come back with the money. We'll go our way. How many of your drovers are planted out there ready to ambush any men I might send? I've got one man out there with orders to take the money back if we don't show. Why should I believe you, Mr. Favor? Well, like you do, I'll give you my word as an ex-officer and gentleman. No. No, I won't deal, Mr. Favor. No smart commander plays into the enemy's hands, makes the enemy play into his. Now you hear my terms. You ride out of here now, alone, and you bring that money back. Now, after you've done that, I'll release you and your comrades. No chance. That promise has been made and broken once already. You prefer that we have you all executed? Oh, but then you'd never get that money, would you? That's quite right. So I propose to do it one at a time. Lieutenant McKeever. Yes, sir. Assemble a firing squad. A firing squad? Apparently, we have to convince Mr. Favor that we mean what we say, so we'll execute one of his comrades. And since, Mr. Yates, you've been the most trouble, I think you deserve the honor. After that, Lieutenant, why, we can let Mr. Favor have a second opportunity to bring us the money. You'd really do that, Colonel? This is war, Lieutenant. We've got a battle to win. Assemble a firing squad. No, sir. There'll be no firing squad. Lieutenant McKeever, I'm your commanding officer. I've given you a direct I'm order. I'm not my commanding officer anymore, and the war's over, Colonel. Only I've been too big a fool to know it. Can't you see he's wrong? These aren't soldiers we're fighting. They're civilians, decent, law-abiding citizens. We got no right to take their lives. Lieutenant McKeever, 
I'm sure I don't have to remind you of the penalty for refusing to obey a superior officer. I order you for the last time. Assemble a firing squad. No, sir. Lieutenant. dead. That means I'm your commanding officer now. But I don't demand your unquestioning obedience as he did. I have no stomach anymore for firing squads and killings in the name of a cause that no longer exists. We're not a military unit. We're renegades. Soldier puppets. I know that now. So, I'm asking you, to disband this group here and now. Mount up and ride out of here to whatever homes you have left to go to. It'd be easier, Lieutenant, if you'd order us to go. No more orders, Katie. I ask you to go. Back to camp, wishbone, have you fixed up in no time. I gave him my word of honor. I meant it. I never thought any different. You're done, Daddy. You're letting them bees drift. I get them. I get them. Well, come on. What do they think they are doing? Well, looks like a bunch caught on them. They must have been riding with their heads tucked under their arms. Put somebody else on flank. Don't want to talk to them. I don't know. We're spread out pretty thin, though, Mr. Favor. Anybody'd make a little mistake. As far as I'm concerned, there's only one size of mistake. 
big. Come on, Marcy, stop fooling around. We're late getting started. Well, hurry as fast as I can. About a cup left, still warm. It's holding you up. Nothing. You should have been rolling 15 minutes ago. Mr. Favor, those men have come in and found me not all set and ready. Always the first time. Well, don't you hold your breath until it happens. What's the matter with you? Did you get up on the wrong side of your sack this morning? Yeah, I guess. Well, now, what about that cup of coffee? What you so head up about? We've been through this before. Not to make it any easier. Half a dozen men short. You're this size, picking your teeth with a 45. Well, those fellas that cut out weren't pulling their part of the load anyway. And well, now everybody else has to pull double. Beginning to tell them men are getting tight edgy. Uh, they can just rest when we get to Mission Valley. Yeah, if those new men I telegraphed were waiting for us. How much longer do we get there? A couple days until the week later. Hold it, one for me. What do you mean, hold it? You get it when the getting's good or you don't get it at all. I think I'm doing run a short order house here. Temper, temper, temper. Well, who's mad? You are. Why did you roll out of your bedroll wrong side this morning? Marcy! Yes, sir. <laughs> Prince uh, said you want to see me. Yeah, but up forward with the scout usually is. Well, he's supposed to be out looking for trouble, too. Oh, what now? Well, I spotted somebody yesterday. He looked like he was following the herd. And what do you know, I found his campfire this morning up there on the ridge. Stuck pretty close. Yeah, close enough to come in and have supper with. And, uh, unless he had a reason not to. As if we didn't have enough to worry about. All right, pass the word. Have them watch out for him. Just what I had in mind. Thank you. All right, Mr. Tobias, senor. Oh, swell. Mr. Favor? Oh, I already have. Those beefs cut out. I was to worry about Mr. Favor. We got them all back. Why was it even necessary to get them back? It's just one of those things that happens all the time. Not on any drive I bust. It only happens once. Is that clear? Well, yes. Well, maybe because you're new to the outfit, you expect some special treatment. Huh? No, no. Good, then you won't be disappointed. All right, you two will take over a drag. Drag? Oh, now, whatever you say, Mr. Favor. Come on, Danny. Oh, Joe. You knew better. That wasn't even your station. Well, uh, no, but I... Uh, well, uh, not exactly the picture of Guardian Angel. He didn't mean no wrong, Mr. Favor. He's a nice kid. Hope that makes the dust a little easier to take. Favor! That's him. Sure it's the same man? Oh, I'll bet my money on it. All right, let's go. You need any help, boss? Oh, you're still riding, Trey. Right?
didn't already. He probably saw us coming. Yeah. Afraid we'd waste too much time trying to find him now. I'd sure like to know what he's up to. Well, he follows us and then disappears when he sees us coming. Figures he sure ain't up to any good. Joe's Carla and Dre? Joe's good as asked for it. And Clayton can use a little dust to settle him down. Yeah, well, Carla covers more flank than just about anybody else around. And Clayton's the type who maybe might quit if it gets too rough on him. I can do without him. Sure, can't all you. Yeah. I'd rather have ten drovers and another job and do it right than an army of Danny Clayton's. Well, that ain't that bad. For Later, sure. Roddy. We've got something more important to worry about now. I got a gal nine feet tall. I got a gal that ain't old. Sleeps in the kitchen, her feet in the hall. Skip to my loo, my darling. Skip, skip, skip to my loo. Skip, skip, skip to my loo. Skip, skip, skip to my loo. Skip to my loo, my darling. All right, boss. Everything all right? Oh, it's quiet around here, all right. But uh, seems to me the star voice has kind of got you spooked a little. Well, as long as it's me, it ain't the herd. Keep your eyes open. Skip, skip, skip to my room. Skip, skip, skip to my room. Skip, skip to my room. Skip to my room. Any trouble? No. I could ride to watch in a rocking chair. Like you did this morning? I'm sorry about that, Mr. Favor. Won't happen again, I promise. Any luck? Well, if he's hiding out there, he's doing it under a rock. Well, just that wait for him to make his play. You're not gonna keep a double watch all night. The choice. Either no sleep or no hurt. Stay out of the rocking chair, boy. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Favor. A couple dozen head, though. And bad enough. I could take you a few minutes and go after it. I leave it's too short. We we'll just have to write him off. Why don't we go after that trigger happy friend of ours? We can't spare the man. I can't figure is why he shot at Clayton. What'd that prove? Well, it spooked the herd, didn't it? For what? For two dozen head? If he could round them up. Yeah. Aren't those ours down there? Strays, don't they? Yeah, I found them back there a ways. They're sad all over the brush. What happened? You heard spook last night? You wouldn't know nothing about that, I suppose. Not a thing. Well, the way you've been watching us, you ought to be up on just about everything. Not last night. Camped on the flat last night. 
But you have been following us. Oh, sure, for a couple of days. Why? I'm kind of choosy about the company I keep. It's an old habit of mine. Not about to dawn an inside straight till I try on the dealer's coat. See, the way I figured, man would be a fool not to get laid land before he tried to move in. Move in? Well, yeah. I'm looking for a job. Put me on. Come on. over in my life. And if those replacements only show up, so I can relax and enjoy it. What about him? Oh, Royce, what about him? Oh, come on, Clay. You're gonna get rid of him, aren't you? He's doing a good job. What for? I thought that was all settled. All right, you're the trail boss. You can hire anybody you want. He explained why he was falling. It wasn't unreasonable. He didn't explain why he tried to bushwhack Danny. Denied that. You think he'd brag about it? Well, outside of that, that's all you got against him, except for falls for a day or two. On the other hand, he picked up most of those strays. He saved us a lot of time, money, and trouble. So you figure you owe him something, I suppose. I owe him my thanks, at least. And you know how short-handed we were. Sure. But it's a great way to tie with the outfit. Get in good and wait for chance to pull something bigger. Possible. Matter of fact, I remember somebody else trying that once. You. All right, Art. Maybe I got nothing on him, but well, I'll bet you my last Iron Man he isn't joining this crew just for the job. As long as he does it, I got no complaints. Pretty country. Reminds me of back home. You ever been on Cimarron? Nope. Look, don't you go back there on the flank someplace? Yeah. You know, I was in a job like this a couple years ago up near Cimarron. You ever worked Cimarron Trail? Hey, Ross. I'll take over here. Rowdy wants more men at drag. Why me? Everybody in this outfit eats his share of dust. My share, but no more. Don't do us any favors. I won't. Ah, uh, Clayton. Shoot me rabbit lately? Or just want the herd to have a little exercise. How'd you know about that? Well, the moon kept me awake last night. Couldn't shut my eyes. How about your mouth? There's only three things in this world is real quiet. Falling snow, the hour just before dawn, and the mouth of a man just dead. showed up. I well, can't say I was itching to come. Well, I figured this was just a spot for you, being as you're so good at rounding up strays. Keep moving, I want them in the valley settled by sundown. You want me to kiss them tonight, too? Get them, you'd like. Well, everything's running smooth. I think we'll make it by sundown. It's amazing how efficient the crew gets once they smell night on the town. Yeah, most of them is. Who's that mean? Royce. Oh, you too? 
And what's your headache? Well, I ain't got no headache. It's just that he ain't going out of his way to be exactly friendly. You want a friend, you join a social club. Now get him bedded down. In your favor? The sheriff wants to see you. Sheriff? See, in the town Cactus Wales, he's at the choke wagon. Oh, Lord, what, what kind of a law you suppose we broke now? Well, it's probably just the usual welcome we tended to all drovers. Get out of my town. Yeah. Uh, nothing like that, Mr. Favor. We don't mind drovers one bit. Why, if it wasn't for you boys, hard nobody would come to Cactus Wells. Besides, saloons can use the business. Well, you sure the places will get it? Anything special on you, my sure? Yep. I'm looking for any one of these gents. Outlaws, all of them. Outlaws? Why come to us? Let me assist him, Mr. Favor. Man riding alone is more liable to attract attention than man riding with a crowd. Makes sense? Well, it's a system, all right. It looks like it works, too. Oh, what's that? Simon Royce. You know him? Seen him? He's one of my drovers. Where is he? Go get him. Arguments, Mr. Favor, how many he's looking for. Better come along with me, right? Well, you said you've read these, Sheriff. What's all this? Well, that's an affidavit from the judge. It tells all about the trial and my acquittal. Acquittal? See what it says. Well, as far as I can see, anybody could have written this. Yes, sir, but not anybody up a newspaper, and that's why the Tulsa Weekly tells the story of the whole trial. I was caddies with him, Mr. Favor, otherwise I'd get picked up once a week. We've got to get this thing straightened out. Seems plain enough to me, Sheriff. Sure. Your flyer's a little out of date. Maybe. But I'd better check with Tulsa, just make sure. You do that. He ain't going nowhere. I'll take those you don't mind. Well, if that's all, Mr. Favor, I'll get back on the job. Go ahead. Sure. It's not. Seems to me you ain't too particular about your crew, him being an ex-convict and all. But pedigree is his business, not mine. Up to you. See you boys back in town. Clay. Yeah. Seems I was better done. You and Roddy take out night off. Then the uh, rest of the crew take off. When do you expect new hands? Should be here now. You go in town with Rowdy tonight. See if they're waiting to run there. What's the matter? Ain't nobody got nothing to do? Uh, we're just wondering, Mr. Favor. When those new drovers show up, you still think to keep Ross on? What? Might be somebody's got some objections? Might be. What for? Because he's an ex-convict? No, not that so much. What then? Well, uh, there, there's just something funny about him. Way he keeps watching all of us. Like he's looking for somebody. Say it straight out, Joe. He just plain sticks in our craw. That's the way it is, boss. He don't get on with us, and we don't get on with him. Since when in the ever-loving world was you ever paid to like each other? Iron ain't a community project. It's my decision. He does his job, he stays. Any more objections? Good, then we can consider this little meeting adjourned and get back to work. Just surprised you didn't put your two cents worth in. The boy said it just fine. And my bet still goes double.
guess those bees are just glad to settle down as we are. You're not worried, are you, Mr. Favor? Oh, as you say, a little curious. I didn't kill my wife, Mr. Favor. I'd come out in the trial. She killed herself. Sure. Yeah, it won't take a lot to turn a gun on yourself. You either gotta be very brave or awful scared. Sick, maybe? Maybe. Anyhow, I figure she made up her mind before I club with her. Put it? When you read what it said on that flyer, I was sent up on a manslaughter charge. Ellen Mead only been married a little less than a year. Sent me away for seven years. Well, when I got back, she was gone. Ran off with another man. Well, I can't blame though. They say he was a lot younger than me. After all, being alone for seven years, I guess you just couldn't wait it out. Many men would be that generous. Well, it's better than believing that she just didn't want me no more. Well, after a couple of months, I, I caught up with her. She'd even changed her name. She was in Tulsa. All alone. She'd gotten about as low as a woman can get. Must have been a rum eating for both of you. No, it was worse for her. I wanted to forget all about it, start all over again. She wouldn't have a part of that. She just put me out. The last time I ever saw her. I guess she shot herself right after I left. How come they accuse you of killing her then? Man with a record, that just comes natural. It took him a couple of weeks to catch up with me, and that was the first I heard of it. Of course, I straightened all that out in trial. Since then? I've been looking. Looking? Looking for the man who left her. So Clay was right. You can join the outfit just for job after all. He's a drover. After he left Tulsa, he drifted west to Texas. He joined up with a herd on a good night loving trail. That'd be your outfit, Mr. Favor. No who he is? Don't know his name, I don't even know what he looks like. But if he's here, I'll find him. That is, if you're still here. Here? Out there? Someplace? I'll just be hanging around like before. You can't stop me, Mr. Favor. My wife's dead. And somebody in this outfit's gonna answer for it. Time for seconds. Come on, move along, move along. Got to get the rest of the fellas in here. Let's go. All right, what is this? All of a sudden, you expect me to wait on you? <laughs> you don't think for one minute we're going to settle for that and we get a good meal in town, do you? Good meal? Well, when you get Tomaine, don't come to me for help. At least it'll be better tasting Tomaine what you dish out. You got time, Quince? I'm sorry. Best you keep your eyes on instead of your big mouth. Yeah, well, how about keeping those big things out of the way, then? You through with that? What brand of poke can't they squeeze that out of? That's the most expensive lotion you've ever seen. Two dollars a bottle. Come all the way from Paris, France. Oh, and it's all I'm seeing, too. We gotta use something strong. Drown out the smell of the herd. Me, I'll take cow. Never would have guessed. Mm. 
Clayton? No, thanks. Not tonight, Missy. You send a telegraph, Paul Freeman at this address. Ask him what's holding him up. Gotcha. I'm here when you are, Roddy. Hey, that's what I call a real big city drover. Oh, now, be you deck out for. Cactus Woods ain't no El Paso boy. Females is females, no matter where they hang their hey, hat. Hey, a lady killer. Yeah, even smells kind of fancy. Probably scare up more flies than women. Roddy, if you play your cards right, I may even cut you in. Oh, looks like you got some competition for a change, Roddy. Well, I might not uh, sell so fancy, boy, but experience, you know. Experience? Rowdy, you're looking at the granddaddy casting over the whole Southwest. I'll bet you I've kissed more girls than you've ever seen. He talks a heck of a game, doesn't he? Not only talk. Someday I'll show you my little dress book. There ain't a town kicking that hasn't got some girl just waiting for Danny Clayton to come back. Hey, you've really been around, haven't you? Yeah. I, uh... I suppose you've ever been down Oklahoma way, haven't you? Oklahoma? Sure. You've been hit Missouri, Arkansas, been all over. Cimarron Trail, Tulsa? Yeah. Look, Ruddy, you and uh, Danny better get rolling, huh? Well, no hurry. You ever come across a girl named Helen? Helen? Oh, I suppose so. I mean, Sally, Mary, Helen. <laughs> I get them kind of mixed up. Look, Grace, you, you should be going out night hawking, huh? I got time, Mr. Favor. Helen Rogers, she called herself. She was uh, kind of small, real pretty, and brown hair. Rogers. Helen Rogers. Helen Rogers, yeah. Oh, I remember her now. You know her too, do you? Yeah, Clint. I know her too. What's going on? Well, he was gunning for me. <sighs> You're going in the tongue, get going. I can't figure it. What do you want to gun me for? Uh, he was just looking to gunny buddy, Danny. One for sure, he probably won't be with this outfit any longer. Let's go. Yeah, you couldn't have been any faster if you'd known he was going to do that. I knew. I'll talk to him alone. Think find him, huh? Uh, you heard. Get a kid blowing his own horn. Everything he said adds up. To what? Another manslaughter charge? Is that all you need to kill me? What kind of excuse did he have for killing my wife? He didn't. Come on, face it, Royce. She shot herself. On account of what he did to her, the same thing. You still don't know Clayton's your man. <sighs> you kill? You'll never be sure. I'm sure. But the next loudmouth punk that comes along, and the one after him. It'll never end, Royce. You'll have to kill them all. Roy, think I can cover the whole end of the valley myself? You're supposed to be on watch, too, ain't you? All right, Mr. Avery, it'll keep for the time being. Well, are you coming? It's my fault. I ain't held up. All right, go on. And nothing you'll be needing it for. Of course not, Mr. Favor. I'll need another Nighthawk. Nighthawk? Yeah, I wouldn't bother you, except uh, we're a little bit short. Well, that's all right. Glad to help. What? Uh, any special place, Mr. Favor? Yeah, the south side, near Royce. All right. And uh, you keep a sharp eye on him, huh? Now, if he leaves his post, you tell Kilroy to follow him, and you come back and tell me, all right? What is your thing, Mr. Favor? Uh, thank you. I'll do my doggone us. Evening, huh, Mr. Roy? Oh, hi, Mushy. 
You lost him, or you just scared of the dark? Gee, I don't know what you mean, Mr. Rice. I'm just trying to do a good job like Mr. Favor wants. Well, that's fine, Marcy. He's do a good job. So fine. Uh, myself, when I can't see, I get out my letters book. That way, instead of counting cheap, I just end up counting. Well, do you want to talk about it, or do you want to try to run that grizzly down yourself? Hmm? Royce. Grizzly? Royce, more like a Boris up on Saturday night. Not much to hang on to. You hung on to him all right, right in the belly. I had to. He met. He was gone for Danny. Why? As good as reasons, or at least he thinks he does. Point is, I knew about it this afternoon. Oh, not that he was gunning for Danny, but somebody in the outfit. Well, why don't you just get rid of him right then? It wouldn't have done any good. It just hung close to the herd anyway. By letting him stay on, I could keep an eye on him. Maybe even find out who he is after before he found out himself. That makes sense. Much the way it turned out. I'm worse off than I was before. I let him go now, he'll just pick any off from ambush somewhere along the line. Can't let him stay on, neither. I'd have to ride her on him 24 hours a day. Well, how about telling the sheriff? Ain't law against threatening. Just do one. Well, Mr. Favor being a trail boss is one thing, but blowing Gabriel's horn and trying to go wings at the same time is something entirely different. Huh? Well, why don't you just tell Clayton about Royce, the whole story, then back off and let them fight it out. It isn't any of your business. They're working for me in my business. Not when it comes to a killing. Mr. Favor, Mr. Favor! Come on, it's fine! Mr. Royce, you let out! You seen somebody after him? Well, that's just it. I didn't even see him go. What? Well, one minute he was there and the next he... How long ago? Maybe a half hour, maybe a little more. Well, what took you so long to tell us? Well, I tried to find him. I, I couldn't believe it at first. I looked everywhere. Nighthawk. Well, I'm sorry. I'm real sorry, Miss Baker. Look, if Roddy gets back before I do, tell him I went into town. Tell him why. Hey, look. Mr. Wish. Now, come on. This isn't your fault. Yes, it is, Mr. Wish. I didn't do what I was supposed to. Mr. Royce got loose on account of me. Now, we don't know he did it. Could have been an accident. Well, you don't believe that, Mr. Wish. Nobody does. Well, just stop blaming yourself. Now, go on. Give me some water. It's all finished. We dug about 50 yards back there. Good. All we have to do is wait for Miss Favor. And I still can't figure it out. That's what we saw Danny. He was walking out of the saloon with the prettiest looking head you ever seen. When was that? 
Well, that was earlier. Uh, we waited around for him. We heard the uh, Reddit's company to ours. Was he drinking much? I warned everybody else. I don't know about later, though. No, I wish this, uh, this wasn't no accident. I didn't say it was. Kobe, we're in a fight. See the sheriff? He's form of the Time they get more when Royce could be in New Mexico. Seen Clay? Nope. Afraid there's not much hope there either. Must just had too much of a head start. Something near Yeah, Wishbone says you knew what Royce was gonna do all along. To a point. Kept him on? Well, I'm sure Wishbone fill you in on the rest of it. Yeah, all except about you sending Mushy to keep an eye on him. Yeah. Fred might have been a mistake. Yeah. You know what you always say about making mistakes? Yeah. I remember. Don't you lay off. Can't you see he feels bad enough already? Well, Dan Clayton can't feel a thing. Your favor, Senor and the others are coming back. I think they have Royce. What's going to happen, Mr. Wishbone? Well, we'll turn Royce over to the sheriff. But then what? Well, the law takes over. They'll give him a trial and decide whether or not he's guilty. Well, we know he did. Maybe the law's got to say so. Lane. Well, Royce, what do you want me to do? Stop crying about it? I couldn't be happy to kill him myself. You must be feeling real fine then. When I kill a man, I do it to his face. You left herd last night. You waited for Danny in the road from town. You bushwhacked, and then you tried to make it look like an accident. I'd say for the sheriff, Clay. No, sir. He's going to tell it to us. The trail drive got its own laws. There's no reason why we can't try. Yeah, if it's her business, this is murder. We got that right, too. Not as long as the law's around. Take care of it. Looks like you've got a full-blown mutiny on your hands. Could be worse than that. They go through with it. Each and every one could be for murder. Now, if I know Robbie and Clay, they'll go through with it. If they do. They'd better figure on digging new graves. One for Royce, the other for me. Now listen to me, all of you. Now look, Mr. Listen! Now this ain't a trial that's building into a lynching. You got your minds all made up and without proof. Well, how much more do we need? He tried to kill Danny right here in camp. He even told you he was gunning for him. You don't know that he accomplished it. Besides, Danny was drunk, he'd always been careless, so it could have been an accident. What about a couple days ago when the herd almost stampede? Tried to ambush Danny. I didn't shoot Clayton. He was shooting the shadows. Besides, why would he want to kill him then? When he still didn't know Danny was the man he was after. And don't forget, you want to take things into your own hands, be judge and jury. You gotta go whole hog. The executioner, too. What are we supposed to do? Let him go. I'll turn him over to the sheriff. Let the law take care of it. One last thing. I know a lot of you have got to throw my weight around too much. That's part of being a trail boss. Boss is right. Or it moves, trail's easy. When he's wrong, beef and men are lost and hurt. Either way, it falls back on his shoulders. So if I made a mistake about Royce, it's up to me to correct it. My way. All right, Royce. Let's keep moving with the sheriff. <laughs> the 
sure is nice to see how some of you fellas are smartened up all of a sudden. I still say Rice killed Danny. Well, maybe. That's for judge and jury to say. Now, how'd you like your crow? Boiled or fried? I'll well, make to be just fine. Thank you, Mr. Favor. Sure could have been tight. Great deal if ain't gonna be any heat on you. All right, come on, Mr. Favor. No point in you taking me. Same thing's gonna happen. You showed him how it was an accident. Showed him how it could have been an accident. That's what it was. Is this under the saddle? That show you, Bear? Well, I just got stuck there. You under the saddle blanket? Uh uh. You put that under there to keep that horse running. He would have moved with a dead weight hanging from the stirrup. And the battering Denny took could cut the beating you gave him. You can't prove it. Well, it ain't up to me. It's up to a regular judge and jury. So you know it all the time, huh? Let's go. Sure. Met him on the road coming back from town. He was so drunk he didn't recognize me. He didn't know why I was beating him up. Oh, mushy. Oh, now, come on, favor. You know better than that. Let's go. I can, Mr. Favor. Fine, Mr. Beaver. I, I wanted the bad to make up for letting him go. You did find my sheep. Just fine. I couldn't shoot. Couldn't shoot anybody, I guess. Let's just hope you never have to. Just fine. I'll say, boss, um, about Royce. Well, uh, we're all wrong, and the boys want me to tell you, so, uh, oh, I'm telling you. So you've told me. Now keep moving. Right. Good for you. Don't get your fur up at me, Jensen. I'll comb it down for you. Now, just take it easy. We're all a little bit edgy now. 
Look, you want me to tell him? All right, what's holding things up? Well, uh, the men, boss, they've been talking. I'll say it for them. We hired on to drive cattle, not get laughed at. Yeah, so? So if you want this herd driven smack through town, down to them holding pens, you better do it yourself. We sure ain't gonna. Is that right, Quince? Well, I figure he's speaking for all of us, Mr. Favor. You see, this whole town's turning out to see us in. And, well, there's no sensible need for 20 men to be pushing nine hitter steer. Well, that's true enough. Two men can handle it. Ready? By the way, everyone's a man of Mr. Favor. Oh, shut up, Mushy. Just for once, will you keep your big mouth shut? Well, where do you think you're going? Well, where else? I watch the taste of your cooking out of our mouths. Never lost a chuck wagon before. Ever before. Well, you tried, Mr. Wishbone. Them cattle almost went over you along with that wagon. Yeah, but it's a cook's responsibility, boy. The wagon and the supplies are his responsibility. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> he just can't hardly hold his head up after something like that. You met him, Mr. Favor, too? Oh, I don't know what I think. I'll tell you one thing, though. I'm sure not gonna thank Mr. Favor. Not for what happened back at the Devil's Patch Quilt. <laughs> hey, hey, what I fear most is a stampede. <laughs> Out on the drive, that seemed like a lot of money, huh? I'm flat busted myself. Well, I guess we can count ourselves mighty lucky. Nobody got killed. Darn fool favor. Had no right to turn us into that patch quilt. He was a trail boss, wasn't he? Well, what I would like to know is uh, when do we collect wages now? What makes you think you're going to get paid? Well, we must get paid. Sure we will, just as soon as Favor collects for her, he didn't deliver. So, we find out anything about a pay yet? Nope. i tell you one thing, if we don't get paid, some of us going to treat Mr. Trail Boss to a Texas knuckle dance. I think the boss has got more to worry about than your Texas knuckle dance. Yeah, what is that? Well, he's taking the tally sheet down to the association right now. How would you like to be the one to tell Brock Dillman that we only brought in nine head? I'm afraid that's it, all right. You know how much you cost me, Favor? I get 20 cents a head every steer goes through this office. On account of you, I lost something like $400. OK. How did it happen? Where were you when you got teased in this wire? 
Uh, half a day below Desert City. I was the first I heard of this railroad car shortage. And I'd have to be Tom Bickle and uh, Great Bend to take bottom dollar for the herd. So? So we ran the legs off of them. By the time we'd crossed the ferry, we picked up two days on Bickle. Bickle was still ahead of you, huh? About a half a day. And I figured best bet to push past him and go up the west side of Table Ridge. It was a hard 16-hour drive without water. But when we hit the main trail again... Bickle was still ahead? About an hour's drive. I left only one more chance to beat him into Great Bend. Devil's Patch Quilton. You know how dangerous that pass is this time of the year. Now, we almost made it just another half hour. Almost? You gambled, Favor, and you lost. And you try to explain that, Mr. Teasner, any ways you like. Teasner coming in here himself? I wired him. Come in on the next train. Hey, dollars, tents. How am I supposed to pay off my crew with that? It's the way the contract reads, two and a half cent, two and a half cent, nine heads, eight dollars and ten cents. If you can't pay off your crew with that, that's your sweat, trail boss. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. Well, I was hoping I might be able to get a cash advance on my next drive. I don't figure you'll be making any more drives for us, Favor, or nobody else for that matter. Something fishy here. You're too good. I don't believe you. Look here, Dillman. You remember Charlie Mays? Yeah. No advance. Baylor. Charlie Mays only lost 200 head. You lost a whole herd. No difference. Charlie Mays is drunk. I something. No, what? We've got this new rule. Payment in advance. Yeah, what are you talking about? You settle up like always when I check out. Oh. Mr. Favor, we've got this new rule. This time you ain't gonna get paid, is that it? Oh, no. You see, it's just that I... Yeah, well, you never mind here. Yeah. Now, you run along, you get me some hot water. That is, if you're not afraid, I'm gonna steal the jug.
I have 19 hands that haven't even got a partial draw on their pay yet. They're hungry, they're tired, they're dirty, they're thirsty. Worst of all, they are broke. Yes, yes, I, I understand. No, sir, I don't think you really do. The most comforting thing they've known in the last couple of months is a hard saddle and a dirty bedroll. Now, they're just liable to turn mean, try to take this town apart. Have you ever seen a crew of sober trail hands bust loose? Well, I... I have nothing to do with that. However, this personal draft of yours for $500, I can't possibly cash it without first checking. Checking with my bank back east. I know, I know, I heard. Yes, that shouldn't take more than a day or two. Mr. Clayton, after all the business I've done with this bank, all of a sudden, I'm inconvenienced for a day or two. Yes. Let's face a few facts, Mr. Favor. Prior to this, you've been what we call a good credit risk. On this occasion, however, not only are no monies due you for the delivery of this last herd, there also seems to be a question as to whether there will be any more contracts for you as a trail boss. Under those conditions, I can't just hand you $500. Here's my reserve. It's gold dust. I'll take a hundred silver dollars for it. Ain't nearly enough, but that forty dollars is all I got. Beer, me with a wild whiskey first. Hey! That ain't gonna help none. We gotta sleep here. I tell you, I've just about had a gutful. Hey! hey! First off, I can't pay you your full wages. Oh. 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 All right, I know how you feel. That, that's the way it is for now. I'll split everything I do have with you. And when I get more, now you'll get more. All right, first man, right here. Six dollars. Six dollars? Well, that ain't enough to... Howdy. Uh. Pay the men off. They can take the money, and then they can do what they want to with it. I'll be in my room. Uh, all right. All right. Line up. Roddy, the way I look at it, any man can make a mistake, but you just ain't human unless you make one mistake, right? Yeah, here, uh, get your... Big six. Oh, thank you. Well, I, I ain't never heard of a man that didn't once do something wrong. What I mean is, uh, well, take me, for instance. Uh, one time we was pushing a big herd of cattle past Amarillo, and uh, this uh, ramrod, well, he wasn't much older than you. And, well, anyway, he, he sends me back to the tail end of the herd, and uh, but uh, to lose a whole herd, I'd never seen that before. Yeah, Quince, uh, you mind stepping aside now and let the other boys have a crack at this big money? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I'll bet even old George Washington made one mistake. Yeah? Mr. Favor, it is I, Gustav. Come on in. Thank you. Thank you. What is it? I, uh, I do not like to bother you at a time like this, but I, uh... Spit it up, man! What's on your mind? Well, it's, uh, it's this matter of, uh, our wages. You see, I, I have a... I have a small ranch and <laughs> a large mortgage. Mr. Favor, I'm a family man. Seven hungry mouths to feed. I, I only took this job to, to buy winter food. Mr. Favor, my, my little ones, in here I, 
I'm, I'm deeply concerned for them. Yeah. I, I know, Gustav. Ah, don't worry. I'll get your wages. Yeah, that, that sounds good. I've got some coming in a couple of days. One way or the other, I'll... I'll get the rest of them. I, I knew it would be all right. Stuck. Thank you. It's me, Mushy. Well, now, I can see that, Mushy. Just wanted to tell you, Mr. Paver, I don't blame him for what happened, like uh, everyone else does. Well, I know it wasn't your fault, Mr. Paver. So you, you know that, do you, Mushy? Sure I do. Mushy, what if I told you it was my fault. What if I swore to you on a stack of Bibles that it was my stupidity that lost the herd, huh? I wouldn't believe that, Mr. Faber. What's that? That's thirty-seven dollars I saved. Mr. Wishbone doesn't even know I got it. Oh, Mushy, uh, look. Well, I know how you need the money, Mr. No, Faber. No, Mushy, look, I, I, I don't need it really. Will you keep it, Mr. Faber? Mushy, you hang on to your money now. Come on. No, you keep it, Mushy, Mr. Faber. Mushy, take your money. I don't need it. I don't want it. All I want is to be left alone. Well, huh? Mr. Faber. Now, come on, Mushy. You get out of here. Right now. It. Scat. You, what do you want? Oh, uh, just... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, throw him. Throw him anyways. crew just rode in. Yeah? I guess it'll take their men an hour or so to get them in the pens. What's on your mind, anyways? Uh, nothing. Well, uh, I was wondering what you're gonna tell Mr. Teasner about losing the herd and all. Huh? Well, up there on the patch quill, you were, uh, a little steamed up about the whole thing. Yeah, so I was. You said that the drag was split. That uh, when the herd turned, if the drag had pulled around in front of them, they wouldn't have gotten near the cliffs. I was in charge of drag. Yeah, well, herd's gone. What difference does it make? Quite a bit. Huh? Oh. Beginning to see the light. Um, maybe it's you're thinking of uh, trail bossing for the association, huh? Maybe, but that's not the reason I came up here. You were hot under the collar then. I just wanted to know if when you could. What I off... said still goes. Now let me get this straight. Let's see, since I'm going down the drain anyways, um, no sense in you being on the hook, too. Is I didn't that say that, no. But that's about the way you see it, huh? All right, that's the way I see it. Well. Well. I'll keep that in mind when I talk to Mr. Teasner. I feel I got the right to know what you're going to say to him. You've got a right to nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now, get out of here. Or you'll throw me out? That's right. You don't mean that. Try me. You better get some rest. You look a little tired. Well, there sure ain't no big decision about spending six dollars. Either you drink for an hour or you eat for a week. Seem like it, but I did appreciate your offer. Thank hey, you. Any time. Oh no, no, Mushy, it's, it's all right. Honest, honest, Mushy. I'm glad to know that, Mr. Paper. Yeah, Mushy. I'm so all fired, thirsty. I feel like I'm. 
coming up in spikes like a cactus. Yo, yo, I got a bit of suspicion your father was a cactus. I think you're right, Mr. Bickle. I think you're right. Hey, it looks like Favor and his crew are holed up in the Drywell Saloon. Now, what say we go over there and congratulate them on beating us to Great Bear? Of course, they had to lose a few cattle to do it. Ah, uh, yeah, yo, uh, them <laughs> fellas are no mood for you and your fooling. Why, Mr. Bickle, I wouldn't think of fun in them boys. While over there amongst that despair and heartache, I just thought I might find a few friends to say hello to. <laughs> a thing like this. Think I'll leave, Mr. Wishbone? Yeah, wait till it gets a good start. Hey, you think I'm in? Bye! Gil! Gil, come! Can you join me? Never seen you drink straight out of a bottle since you've been trail bossing, Gil. Well, I guess it's sort of like riding a horse. Once you learn, you never quite forget how. You're sorry to hear what happened to you up in the patch, Will. Oh, yeah. yeah. But can't say I'm sorry you didn't beat us in for the top money, though. The ranches I work for can't afford to practically get away with it like the association can. The way it goes. Win some, lose some. Anything I can do to help, Gil? No, no, thanks anyway. Only really bad to run. Heaven is with a bank in town. How's that? For just $500 on a personal draft, I gotta wait two days to get my money. You told me to cover it, didn't you? Like the man said, we are not making loans on personal pledges today, Mr. Bailey. Yeah, that bank's gonna give you that $500 if I have to co-sign the note with you. Oh, no, Tom. I couldn't let you do that. Yeah, let me ask you one question. If you were in my shoes and I were in yours, what would the answer be? Tom! You know I'm going to appreciate this. Well, what are we waiting for, Gil? Mr. Clayton? We've got some business to discuss. Certainly, Mr. Bickle. Have a seat, gentlemen. Now, what can I do for you? Amazing how hot hot water can be when you're not used to it. Hey, on your skull, yourself. You bet. It was all good, didn't it? Yeah. What are you gonna do now? Oh, well, fine, old rowdy. You know, with a fresh shave and fresh bath, and money in my pocket, I feel like I might even go to church or something. Yeah, well, I ain't get myself something to eat. Gee, that's a good idea. You know, if I stop and have one drink, I may never eat again. You know what you mean? <laughs> you're great. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Hey, where you fellas been, huh? Hey, you gonna clean up at all? What for? I'm talking about absolute necessity to uh, have a shot. Huh? You don't drink. Hey, come on. Come back here, whatever you're doing. They're sure a lot happier than they were two hours ago. Oh, yeah, it seems right. Say, Tom, there's something I'd, uh, I'd like to ask you. What's that? Well, no. You passed the turn-off about an hour before we did. You saw the same overcast hanging over the patch quilt. Just supposing you was in the same spot with a run-out herd, and you know if you came in second at the railhead that you'd practically have to give the herd away. Now, I don't want to put you in a spot, but 
Well, do you think that there's a chance you, uh, you might have tried to push him across the patch? Court? I might have. Gil, any trail boss might have made the same decision. Thank you, good buddy. I gotta admit, that's a load off my mind. Gil, I hear your drag lets you down. Oh? Just make sure Teasner knows that. Don't let him think that what happened up there was all your fault if it really wasn't. friend of yours, huh? More than that, he's a good friend. So you're coming out of the bank together. What's that all about? No, it's my business, fella. Is it? You remember me asking you about Charlie Mays? I remember. You remember I killed him? I remember that, too. Tillman, you are getting on my nerves. Now get your hands off me before I take them off. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Awful sloppy, Dylan. What are you doing drawing standing so close to someone, huh? I can wait, trail boss. Favor. Yeah. Teasner's come in, but he doesn't want to see you yet. Oh? Huh? About the people he wants to talk to first. What I can say about Gil Favor is that Gil is one of the best trail bosses in the business. That bar's an answer. Good. I'm very pleased to hear you say that, Mr. Pickle. You see, I find myself in the position of having to move one more herd before winter sets in. Getting a little late in the season, isn't it? It is. I imagine a drive this late will be touch and go in many respects. That's why I need an exceptional man as trail boss. Well, at the moment, I'm considering three men for the job. One of them is you. Another is Gil Favor. Gil's a good man. You'll look a long time before you find a better one, sir. Until his last drive, I would have agreed without question. As it stands now, however, yeah. you drive for small, independent ranches, Mr. Bickle. How many head of cattle do you move in a good year? 1,600? 1,800 at the most? That's about it. An association drover, Mr. Favor, for instance, last year he moved upwards of 6,000 head. At 2.5%, that is a fairly comfortable income. It sure is. I assume you have no prejudices against working for the association? Do you honestly intend to move another herd this fall? Mr. Bickle, I am known as a rather remorseless businessman. However, I never stooped to small tricks under any circumstances. You haven't answered my question. Well, as a matter of fact, I'd be happy to work for the association. But you see, sir, I... Perhaps you'd be good enough to give me the benefit of your professional opinion regarding the unfortunate loss of Mr. Favor's last herd. Your answers may even give me some insight into your own professional judgment. No. Your herd was barely in advance of Mr. Favors. You faced approximately the same situation he faced. Why didn't you turn your drive into that shortcut? Well, I... I figured the odds were against me getting through. I... I'm not saying that Favor was wrong. But, sir, I wouldn't have pushed my herd through there for all the tea in China. Let me get this straight. You're planning on bringing another herd through this year? Precisely, Mr. Yates. It's being formed at this very moment. 2,200 head. And you're considering three men as your trail boss? Tom Bickle, Mr. Favor, and me? You recall what you told me the last time we met? About hoping to work your way up? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. This may be a very rare opportunity, Mr. Yates. Mr. Wishbone. What? Ain't this what we call eavesdropping? No. Uh, yeah. We ain't supposed to. Will you shut up? 
As bad as I want a herd of my own, I don't plan on running down Mr. Favor just to get it. All I want is the truth, good or bad. I've worked for Gil Favor a long time. As far as I'm concerned, he's a top trail boss all the way down the line. Then you feel he was right turning into the devil's patch, but... Mr. Teasner, I'm just his ramrod. I'm supposed to do a job. I'm not pass judgment on whether he's right or wrong. And you would have made the same choice he made. Oh, I didn't say that. What if you had been trail boss, Mr. Yates? Would you have taken that shortcut, knowing how risky it is, how dangerous it is this time of year? Look, Mr. Teasner... A lot of things happened up there. It's kind of confusing. We might have even made it if it hadn't been for a number of things. Or did you by any chance voice an opinion to Mr. Favor concerning the advisability of taking the shortcut in the first place? Yeah. What opinion? Well, I'm afraid that's between Mr. Favor and me. And circumstances have proven you right, haven't they? Yeah, but I'm wrong a lot of the time. Well, thank you, Mr. Yates. I'll let you know what I decide by the end of the day. What's that all about? Hmm? Uh, nothing, nothing that concerns you and me. Miss Catherine, do you have any difficulty getting what I wanted? Oh, no, sir. When I told Mr. Clayton it was for you, he was most cooperative. Thank you. It would appear your suspicions are not altogether groundless. Mr. Favor's personal draft are $500, co-signed by Mr. Bickle. I figured he was too friendly with that independent to suit my taste. It would have been worth a considerable amount to Mr. Bickle to guarantee that his herd reached Great Bend first. What do you think? I think we lost a whole herd. I think anybody had been a fool to turn into patch quilts this time of year. And I think Gil Favor is no man's fool. That weapon of yours, you certainly keep it in magnificent condition. It's a Navy special. I think it is time that we had a talk with Mr. Favor. ready to talk. Association men. They ain't exactly prone to forgive and forget. Hey, Mr. Pickle! 
Yo, yo. I'll buy you a drink. Okay. <laughs> the association a considerable amount of money, didn't you? Yes, sir. All right. If you have any excuses or explanations, I'm anxious to hear them. Well, as you already know, Mr. Teasner, the important thing seemed to be to beat Tom Bickle into the railroad. I'll just wander over there and see what's going on. Don't tag along. No, you better not. Boss might not want us both pushing into his personal affairs. It's difficult to believe this could have happened to a man of your experience. Could it be? Come in, Mr. Yates. Could it be, Mr. Faber, that that herd was as good as lost? The moment you turned into Devil's Patch Quilt. Well, if you want to put it that way, you, you could say the herd was as good as lost the first day I took it out on the trail. Well, perhaps that's not as improbable as it sounds. What do you mean? I have here your personal draft, co-signed by one Thomas Bickle. What are you accusing me of, anyway? Well, perhaps you'd like to explain. No! Now, you get this straight. I don't mind being accused of making a bad mistake. Even an association man can do that. Mr. Favor. I don't mind being accused of stupidity. You can fire me, you can try to run me out of the territory. But if you start spreading it around that I was paid to lose that herd, you are going to make me very unhappy. Mr. Favor, you didn't let me finish. I have a telegram here. It says, in effect, that you have ample funds in your bank account to cover that personal draft. I'm convinced there was no collusion between Bickle and you. Oh, you see, there was no real need for your accusations or your anger. However, it still leaves us with our basic problem. Was the loss of that herd due to outright negligence, stupidity, or was it just one of those unavoidable things that happened? I still have two questions. I'll answer them the best I can. Mr. Yates here tells me that you said, quite forcibly, I believe, that the drag was at fault, that through proper action, the drag could have saved most of the herd. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's what I said, all right. But that's not the whole of it. You see, at the time, I... To seen my whole herd go under, I was more than a bit upset. The truth of the matter is, no one on the Lord's green earth, Mr. Yates or any man, could have turned those beeves. Second question. Was there anyone to blame except yourself? No, sir. Absolutely no one except myself. That answers my question. Drop, Mr. Favor, for fifteen hundred dollars. Should be enough for you to pay up your crew and to cover the initial expenditures for this new drive, if you can get a crew together. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, um, no objections, gentlemen. I think Mr. Teasner knows what he's doing. Yes. This late in the season, every day counts. We need a ready-formed crew, men who are used to working together. If they'll work for you again. Where's the herd being formed up? How many head? Roughly 2,200 for Lazy Bar X, just outside of Victorville. At Frank Turley's place. I'll need you there, full crew, ready to move within five days. It means you've got to get started today. Think you can raise a crew? I don't know, but I'm certainly going to try. He'll get one. Rowdy, spread the word. I want 20 men in front of this table at 6 o'clock, ready to ride. All my men are welcome. If any of them can't make it or don't want to, then any of Tom Bickle's men will do. And if Wishbone and Mushy are interested, we'll get a new chuck wagon at Victorville. I'll be over at the bank cashing this. Oh, yeah. I'll be right with you. Uh, Mr. Yates, I believe you heard my decision. Yeah, yeah, that was a good one. Except I have to admit I'm a little confused. Mr. Yates, I raised trotters back east. And the best horse in my stable is named Big Dan. Two years ago, he lost a race that he should have won hands down. Cost me $1,200. But he hasn't lost a race since, and he's made me ten times at $1,200. Yeah, well, that's not quite the same thing, is it? I mean, that's gambling. Listen, son. Every time a cattleman turns around, he's gambling. On whether to shift this year and break even, or hold off a year and maybe make a big profit, or take a big loss. Gambles on drought, flash floods, thunderstorms, Indians, just about anything you can name. But more than anything else, he gambles on the man who drives his herd for him. Man or horse, I want my money on the best that's available. Well, then you knew all along you were going to use Mr. Favor, right? No, Mr. Yates. There's another way that a horse and a man are alike. They can both lose something almost overnight. Pride or confidence or integrity or whatever it is that it takes to win. I didn't make up my mind about Gil Favor until a few minutes ago. Well, if you're still Mr. Favor's ramrod, I imagine he's curious to find out whether he can raise that crew. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Teasner. Told him. Oh. Well, what time is it, anyways? Oh, I don't know. Can't be more than a few minutes after, though. Through this year. But don't worry about Mr. Favor. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. All right, horse. We're going to be together all the way to Victorville. Now, if you're good to me, I'll turn you loose when I get my new chuck wagon. 
All right, let's stop milling around, man. Up. Better get them as far out of town as we can before they change their minds tonight and decide to ride back in. Hey, boss! Take your feet up, Mac. Come on, F. What in the ever loving would that be? That extra hand I was telling you about, I can sure vouch for him. Well, you think it's sober enough to even ride out of town? Well, I bet he ain't too handy on the ground, but once we get him in the fork and saddle, he'll do. All right, paste him together, pitch him in the saddle. Come on. This time, Gil. Mr. Faber. I have one more question. Just out of curiosity, Mr. Faber. Yes, sir. What's that? What if you reach Devil's Patch Quilt with this new herd and find yourself in the same position as last time? What do you think you'll do? One thing's certain, sure, if those clouds are hanging low over the hills again. I'm going to sit there and think about it for a good five minutes more. And then? Then? Then I just may try to push him through again. Well, you ain't going to get nothing done sitting around here like that. Let's go! <laughs> townsmen along the Sedalia Missouri Trail, and he'll tell you that rovers are nothing but trouble. They work hard, play hard, fight hard. They're sons of the devil. But if you want to hear their side, just ask me. Favor's my name, Trail Boss. Snake spooked his horse, he is thrown, gored by a steer. How the heck did he get thrown? Get the metal kill kid, quick. You feeling lucky? Probably feels worse than it is. I hope you are feeling lucky, cuz. I'm just played out. Boy, he's bleeding pretty bad. It's down a dozen miles off the trail. Well, I can stop the bleeding, but you try to move him and it figures the life will bleed right out of him before you get him there. Then we bring the doctor him. Roddy, let's go.
Dr. Jackson? I'm looking for Dr. Jackson. Young man. You're interrupting what in Ireland would be called a week. Pa, he's a stranger. But we're not mourning the dead. We're mourning our own guilt. Are you Dr. Jackson? No. There he is. Dr. Jackson? My name's Faber. I'm boss of a herd in the Sedalia Trail. One of my men's are bad. Yesterday, we had us a lynching. Look, doctor, a man's dying. He needs your help. I'm in no mood to help anyone. Do you want to ride on your horse or across him? I'll need my bag. Eddie, will you get my bag? You must rate this fellow pretty high. That I do. Shotgun, Tom. I want kills more. Well, that won't help your son. He's dead. Lynched is the word. And it's simple justice to hand out the same treatment to the ones responsible. Well, the whole town is responsible. Why pick on one man? We got the sheriff locked in his own jail. He let the mob get Ben. Kells Morgan led the mob. When we find him, we're gonna sing them both up. What'll that give you? We're gonna hang him in the middle of town. We're gonna hang him so high every time a good, decent, law-abiding folk a provo look up, they'll remember what they did to a boy that never reach his majority. He was guilty, Jed. I ain't arguing that. This town's locked up till we find Kells Morgan. Get their guns. How long do you think you can hold us? We'll complete our chores by sundown. Until then, nobody leaves Pro. Nobody comes into Pro. Mister, with your permission, I'd like to leave with the doctor. Who are you? When did you get in town? My name's Saber. I'm a trail boss. A friend of mine is hurt real bad over on the Sedalia Trail. I'm sorry about that, son. I can't take the chance. All we want is the duck. You might just run into a Texas Ranger or something. After sundown, you freeze bird. That may be too late. That's the best I can do. Mister, you might be killing a man you don't even know. Pa, ah, let him go. You forget how your brother died? You're gonna let another man's trouble take importance over our grief? No, he don't go. I don't care how many men die. It ain't gonna turn us from my aim. I got a little chore for the law-abiding folk. They're gonna build us a gas for two. Find this fellow Morgan in a hurry, huh? 
maybe soon. There's Dibson's Lumber Company down there. You'll find all the lumber you need there. You can get all the hammers and saws and nails down at Jim's. All right, move! isn't here, I swear it. I hardly know him. Sorry, ma'am, just checking for Carol's and for guns. But I don't have any guns. Sure you don't, but we'll just look. Let's talk to the doc. Maybe he'll make a run for her with us. You go ahead. I'll see if I can pick up another horse at the livery stable. I'd like to talk to you, Doc. I hope you don't want to talk to me about what I think you want to talk to me about. I hate to disappoint you. Young man, if this were any other day in the world, you wouldn't have to ask me twice. Because Morgan wouldn't be here, would he, Doc? No, not unless he's down in the basement with the other rats. Well, how about weapons, Doc? No, they're the only weapons I use. Well, your pa's making a serious mistake. You've, you've always been a hard-working family, except Ben. I like you, Doc. Don't say anything against Ben. We'll leave it that way. I brought each one of you Mason boys into the world. Your mother was the finest woman I've ever known. She'd hide her head with shame as she'd be here to witness how you're manhandling your friends. She'd want us to do just like we're doing. Ben was Ma's favorite. This man has a friend who's dying, and you won't let me help him. Doc, we got a brother dead. Ben was our favorite, too. Why didn't you see how it is? Look, Doc, I got two horses down at that livery stable. Can I run anything in this state? I never saw a horse could run a bullet. I've seen Brett Mason up on that roof. He's got a buffalo gun. I always thought the doctor was above everyone else. It'd help a sick man no matter what. A dead doctor can't help anybody. You know, you don't read the name, doctor. A young fella like you is wasting your time. You've got a fast horse and a disrespect for the marksmanship of the Masons. There's a ranger camp 30 miles to the south. You get the rangers to clear path for me to your sick friend. I might. Wait, wait. You, you, you can't turn me out. You're killing me. Girls, they find me hide new, they'll kill me. Oh, no, please, Art, please. You open for business? What can I do for you? Some feed and rub down? Come on up, Kills. Ain't the Masons. Well, let me stay, Art. Let me stay. I said, come down. You can't turn me like I was a dog. Well, you've known me for ten years. We've been friends, Art. I've known you for ten years. Mister, you can't let him turn me out. Please, they, they could kill me. You stirred everybody up. You deserve it. Well, why is everybody treating me like I was a crow? It was Ben Mason that murdered a decent, well man in Provo. Everybody was glad enough for me to yell for his neck yesterday, and today you turn your backs on me. How about the sheriff? How about him? He trussed up the monk from taking the mason? Sure he did. But he was hit on the head from behind. He was out cold when the hanging took place. 
They find him, then the sheriff swings too. Yes, but the, the sheriff wasn't at fault. He was unconscious, just like I said. The sheriff don't deserve to die. Pete needs that doctor. We got no call to butt in. The sheriff has a chance if they don't find him. Yeah, that's right. I'm looking out of here for a spell. When I come back, I don't want to see you around. No, we... Wait a minute. Did you get anywhere with the doc? No. Uh, he said there's a ranger station 30 miles south of here, though. Put the saddle back on my horse. We gonna try to make a run for it? Any kind of a break, I ought to be able to get out of range of that buffalo gun. What do you mean, you? He's a friend of mine, too, you know. You send Ann to his death, and you carry with you the rest of your life. I know. Told old man Mason he'd be murdering a man he wouldn't let us ride out of town. We'd be doing the same thing if we turned over Kells. We'd be murdering the sheriff. Yeah, but Pete's in a bad way. Pete's got a chance. The sheriff has him. Settle my horse. Mason, sit down. You've got to help me, so please. Take hold of yourself. Have that horse ready for me. Come on. Too much open country to make it to the hills. And well. Pa wants you down low. It's a telegraph. Telegraph? Where does it lead to? Union Army strung it up during the occupation. And left it for the Indian agent to communicate with the capital at Austin. If there's any good, though, the Mason must have cut it. You're in luck. Well, strike. Come on, find it. Well, if anything happens to you, nobody will know I'm down there. Well, you better pray that I stay healthy. I've been waiting for Jed to leave, but I can't wait no longer. Is 
your name, Mason Man? Nearly was. You wouldn't figure the men who put me in office would build Alice for me, would you, Minnie? for? Andy, you could get help. No, I couldn't. The Mace won't harm you. I've respect to Ben. I want them fine kills. It was Kells so crazy jealous about you that made him make this Ben swing. It was over between Kells and me a long time ago. Maybe so. But it was alive enough in Kells and hurt bad enough for him to slug me from behind. He took a chance to swing himself for the pleasure of watching Ben swing. I hope they find him. I know it's a weak thing to ask, but what about me? They're just bluffing. You can take a chance thinking that I can't. I got a bushel full of thanks from folks in this town over the years. I'd give the whole bushel full if somebody get on a horse and get some help. You'd ask a girl to do this? When I'm swinging, I'm not going to question the sex of the one who cuts me down. No, you're asking too much. Andy, you hunger so bad to see Kells killed. You don't care who gets killed with him, huh? Good-looking woman. According to what side of these bars you're standing on. Who are you? My name's Favor. I got a herd bedded down close by. All right, you've got a herd bedded down. What are you doing in a hole like this? Friend of mine with that herd is dying. Has to have a doctor. Is there any chance of uh, getting at those guns? The Mason's got the keys. I got a horse ready to make a run for the ranger camp, but uh, I'm just figuring it might be better odds to try those guns. Good citizens of Provo who put me in office. You'd have a better chance with a horse. How about that telegraph wire? It's been cut. Yeah, I know, but suppose it could be fixed. Who operates? See the little man in shirt sleeves? Been carrying those boards? Yeah. Frank Sanford. He's the one who operated before it was cut. Uh oh. I'm sorry a friend out of your herd still got to suffer. But the boys ain't turned up kills yet. Jed, you looked how many years getting a bunch of yours on a pay and basis? Ten? Twelve? Now you aim to throw it all away. You let them hang my boy. You're blind, so I ain't gonna argue it with you. What about your other boys? They done back and labor right alongside you all those years. You gonna let them be hunted off the land? My boys feel like I do. Then why are you waiting to string me up? I'm waiting to find Kells. I'll tell you why. You know your boys ain't killers. They couldn't stomach to see more than one hand. If you strung me up, they'd take off right then. You got until sundown. What'll happen come sundown and Kells ain't found? We'll find him. We have to burn down every house to smoke him out. We'll find him. Myra man will risk his life for his partner. You hurt? I'm all right. I told you when the time was right, I was going to ride out. You were a long time coming back. Look, well, we're sitting around here. Pete Nolan's I out there. I haven't forgotten about Pete.
That's so nobody else will get any ideas. Well, this will make us real popular. You can round them up later. In the meantime, the only horses in town will be ours. All right, get to work. You ain't no use up in that tower. You're supposed to shoot anybody trying to make off. We come to kill the ones that caused Ben's death and nobody else. We're weak hearted about the way we do things. We're never going to get justice. Next time you stop a bullet. Mr. Mason, nobody can say you haven't got a grievance, but you're running down a wild road. What do you think I should do? Raise my hand like a kid in school and ask a federal judge to punish the ones who did it? In 15 years, maybe I'd get some satisfaction. There's some here who had nothing to do with that lynching. This whole town's gonna sweat till I get my hands on Kells Morton. That might take some doing. You seen him? All I said was he might be hard to find. When I first set eyes on you, I liked your style. The more I see of you, the less I like it. Now, take a little advice. Don't get in my way again. Frank, get us another keg of nails. says you're the one who was the telegraph. Yeah, but the wire's cut. The wire runs behind cemetery. I figured uh, we'd take your telegraph up there and attach it. Where is it? Back here in the store. But they're expecting it with them nails. Robbie will deliver them. We'll never get away with it. We'll never know unless we try. Cemetery. I'll take a look. <laughs> Figures won't do no good even for the message through. You know how far Austin is? Six, seven hours till sundown. That's time for help. We didn't bring enough to cut this with. We'll use the end the mason cut. Well, what? We didn't come here to look at this. 
Won't do no good to start sending now. Won't be nobody at the other end till 3 o'clock. You see, Provo ain't a regular station. 3 o'clock every afternoon, they put a man on the other end to receive in case we got anything to say. That's two hours from now. Set it up, but we can't send until three o'clock. Guess it's feeding time for the animals. You're above all this, huh, Doc? This boy don't respect his elders. Doc, a man gored by a deer, what do you figure his chances? Well, according to where he was gored. In the belly. High or low? Low, but here. Ah, that's a point in his favor. You able to stop the bleeding? Mostly. Figures it isn't infected now, but it's essentially by sundown. What would his chance be then? A lot less than now. If you got to him before sundown, if a bull gave milk, he'd be a cow. Know of any place we can get something to eat? Well, the cafe's closed today for lack of enthusiasm on the part of the owner. You the owner? That's right. The cafe's closed, but my front door's open. Come on in. Mandy, we got guests. Come on in, fellas. Well, we ain't got much to offer. Just best food, this sign of the grandy, and the best cook. I'm, I'm not hungry. Oh, there's always something in the kitchen. My name's Harris, Sam Harris. This is my daughter, Mandy. Hello. Gil Giver, this is Roddy Yates. I'll bring you what there is. Come on, sit down, fellas. You know, the Masons ain't themselves today. Any other day, Jed Mason wouldn't let your friends suffer. No, I've known the Masons maybe in 10 years. I never knew a finer family in my life. A lot of folks felt I was happy about what happened to Ben. But I wasn't. A lotion never makes anybody feel good. answer right away. Keep trying. It wasn't my fault. He made me do it. He forced me to it. Now move. Both of you. 
A couple dozen buildings in it. He left a horn unturned. Well, they got him hit somewhere. Somebody's got him hit. I found him fooling the telegraph. They fix it? I fix it. You were warned. I told you you had your last warning. If you hit him again, I'll kill you. You're in no position to make threats, sir. Yes, Mason. It's my guess that for sundown, you went murdering a lot more people, just the sheriff. You got me pegged wrong, Mr. Favor. You can't rile me to murder. Hanging the sheriff and kills Morgan is just... The eyes of God and decent men's justice. You're like a loco steel. Anybody in your path has to be stomped to death. Paul, he didn't have nothing to do with the lynching. Paul, what happened to Ben was our fault. Your own brother. Ben killed a man. I ain't arguing that. He had a right for trial. We can't change the fact that Ben's dead. He's right about one thing. We go on the way we are, other masons are gonna be murderers. I want Kells Morgan. Once I find him by sundown, I'll burn to the ground every stinking bill in this town. Well. well. Here. Oh, go ahead now. Take it. Now, you go on in there and make it up the old man. some guns in that jail. That's right. The only problem is getting them. Pa. Will, I give Ben everything I could. I give him the best bed in the house, the best food. I went without so he could have the kind of clothes that pleasured him. I know, Pa. Why did he do it? Mason's been respected in these parts since we said. Let's go home, Paul. Well, there's some things men have to do to preserve the name men. We leave this business unfinished, we'll be miserable till the day we die. And the day we die, the ground will spit right out of our grace with the shame of having a Mason in it. I don't care about myself, Pa, or the others, but you had a hard life and little pleasure. I see you in trouble. Yes, I neglected you boys some because of Ben. I make it up, especially to you, Milton. You're my youngest. Now Ben's gone. Let's go home, Paul. Come sundown, Milton. Come sundown. There's a meeting inside. They want you to come. Well, we might as well get to the point. Our Jameson here says that you left his livery stable with Kel Morgan under your wing. That's right. The argument goes like this, Mr. Favor. Most of these fellas put the best years of their lives to their businesses. Every cent they got, all the work they put in through the years will go up in smoke, unless you give up hells. When I rode in here a few hours ago, the whole town was in mourning, full of sorrow, because you'd let lynching happen. Now you want to do the same thing all over again and throw kills to the wolves. He's no good anyway. That's not the point. 
The point is, to protect a skunk like Kells, we stand to lose all our property and maybe our lives. The sheriff stands to lose his life for certain. We figure we're just giving up Kells. No, we boys. What happens outside, we got no control over. Now, wait a while. No sense in twisting it, so we're the guilty ones. We let a lynch happen. Guilt and shame. Got a good share of both. What are you so sniffy about, Sam? You lose your eating place, what happens to you? The day I lost the use of my legs, I found out there are more important things in life than livery stables or medicine books or stores. Maybe Sam's right. Maybe it's time we stood up like men. What about our families? Are they supposed to starve? It's not my decision to make, it's yours. I got no right hiding kills at the risk of your town. He's in the old well behind the feed store. Well, now you know where he is. Anybody wants to turn him over to the Masons, go ahead. time today, I'm proud of my neighbors. What are we supposed to do? Just sit around till sundown and watch our town burn to the ground? No. The first thing you've got to do is get the sheriff out of jail. Now, you elected him. Stand behind him. How? Masons have got all the guns. When the Yankees tried to collect guns in the South, there were more guns underground than there were on top. Why, I've got a Colt 45 in my cellar. Well, there's a squirrel gun my boys got put away. Anybody else? Robbie and I will handle two of the guns. I'm pretty good with a squirrel gun. I'll take one. Masons, I'm out. I'll tie the rope. Mr. Favor. It looks like they're headed for trouble. The town's had enough, Will. They have guns. What do you reckon to do with them? Free and the sheriff. You'd better tell your pa. He'll never let you. Then the Mason will have to kill a lot of innocent people. And pa, who never did any harm to anybody, will spend the rest of the days in jail. That is, if he isn't killed himself. one of ours. 
Keep an eye on it. Wreck can pick you off like rabbits from that roof. We aim to be the sheriff. You aim to commit suicide. to the ranger camp. He had the crazy idea that if you brought them, everything would be all right with the family. Oh, boy. I shot my youngest. I shot my own boy. Wilt. Mr. Favor. I figure it's a good bet there'll never be another lynching in Provo. The liberty of entering your house, Doc. I figured we'd need these. We'll Thank need you. some horses, too. There's good grass on the other side of the hill. Your horses will be there. Good. Let's go. to climb out of the well, the rope room. Well, let's try and find those horses. the infection fever's going down that's not what asked are you strong <laughs> i wish i had his strength but it'll be a while before he's on his feet thanks doc some signposts to follow? Just worry about this tears. I'll catch up here. Close up that tailgate. We don't want to lose it. 